right? There it is. Okay. Um, good evening, everyone. Welcome to this meeting of the Nantucket Historic District Commission. It's Tuesday, March 26th at uh, 404. And we have 100% attendance, either live or Zoom tonight. So I'm going to do roll call just uh, to make sure that we can hear all of you. Um, so I'll start with bless Steve, you. Stephen, bless you, Stephen Welch. Here. That's, he's live, Abby Camp live. Here. Thank you, Diane Coombs on Zoom. Here. Very good, Val Oliver live. Here. Carrie Thornwell on Zoom. Here. Connie Patton live. Here. Joe Paul on Zoom. Here. Yeah. Linda, mute your phone. And stay in accordance with all the RICO statutes. Thank you. For those of you on Zoom, um, just make sure uh, to mute yourself when you're not speaking. Um, all questions, comments, etc., should run through the chair. And uh, be really careful not to screen share. Thanks. Uh, okay, so I think we can approve tonight's agenda. Are, are there any modifications, Fiona, that we should know of? Some some of them were pulled, as I recall. From so, uh, all business, very very end. All business three twenty six twenty four. It's just a typo. Um, easy to go down five easy street, but that's ten. Okay. That's it. Oh, so. Okay. We're yeah, we're, yeah we're, we're, we are we are not going to get there tonight. I yeah, can guarantee no. that. All right. Oh, okay. Great. Thanks, Fiona. Um. All right, so now the first thing I have on here is the discussion and uh, motion to approve the agenda. Oh, shoot. So sorry. Yes, Stephen, thank you. Um, Stephen has made a motion to approve the agenda on that motion. Abby. I'm an aye. Very good. Diane. Aye. Val. Aye. Stephen. Aye. I'm in favor. Approved agenda. Now we move on to this first item, which is a discussion and vote of Article 38. Is that is that the... Um, the um changing the, the height well were we actually going to vote on that i don't know i thought we were going to just have a discussion but we we did i, I no <laughs> we did not may i we did, we did not we we wow. kind of did and what came up was that some of us had questions that maybe we would individually get answered so we could have an informed discussion versus mm -hmm. a discussion around having questions mm -hmm. so and I'm all for that discussion as long as everyone reviewed it, number one. And number two, if they had any questions, they reached out to get clarification on what those were. I did that, but I didn't get an answer yet. So if you'd like to hold it, there's I, no time limit except before time town meeting. Yeah, and I would just suggest to everyone, please read it. And if you have a question, reach out to planning staff and see, you know, if you have a question, get it answered. And then let's have our discussion and then we can reach out to them if we think that's merited. Okay. okay. So Fair. no no vote as of yet. Yeah. All right. Do your homework. Thank you. Did this. Um, Did this. Okay, now we're on to our consent agenda five items. Let's see. Does anybody need to recuse? No one needs to recuse. As far as I know. Can I have a motion? I, from what? No, I have a motion. motion. <laughs> Approve consent. That sounds like a decent motion, Val. <clears throat> On Val's motion uh, to approve the consent agenda, Abby. Aye. Diane. Aye. Stephen. Aye. Val on your motion. Aye. And I'm in favor. Consent with conditions. Uh, motion to approve. There it is. From Stephen um, on that motion, Abby. I'm an aye. Val. Aye. Diane. Aye. Stephen, aye, and I'm in favor. All right, first uh, new business of February 20th. A um, few things. Come on down, Matthew. These are all got a hand raised. Okay. All three of these items are color change. I thought we did these. 
That's what I thought. But <clears throat> no, um, we reviewed them, and uh, you had requested that we provide a streetscape, and so okay. And so, you, is it new business or not? Uh, I think it's old business because you did discuss it, and I believe you asked me. So there's a board, back. Mr. Chair. If I may. Yes. Um, so you all did re uh, already review, I think, for Six Highland, um, and one of the color changes. The garage one, I believe, is technically new business. I believe that's why there was four of them. Um, but the board that I have written down is Joe, uh, Carrie, Connie. Val and Stephen. Was Stephen sharing? I believe yeah. so. Okay. This was. Did, did yes. you get that? Yeah. Okay. So Matt, I think. Uh, let's see. The garage. I'm sorry. Little housekeeping first. Garage. You said Holly. You think is a new business. Of the three, we didn't discuss it. Uh, yeah, Mr. Chair. Um, so we have one application which is under new business um three five which is the main house color change that was the only one that was not we didn't have it at the time and was not reviewed only the color change for um and please matt correct me if i'm wrong here i'm basing it on what we have in the agenda six highland two and four highland which is the um secondary dwelling and then the garage okay um, and then i'm sorry holly where is the main house it's number one of Number uh, one six. of new business three five. Okay, so I, what I'd like to do is move that up. Um, if it's okay with you, if I jump in on that and make uh, get a motion to move number one of new business of three five twenty four into this discussion, and then um, I think Matt, if you're okay with it, you can reserve the right. But we'll just proceed with all four of them with the same sure. board for the sake yeah. of. Simplicity. That makes sense. Thank you. And if it turns out that you need a lifeline, you can ask for a member who will identify as Ray <laughs> in advance, in fairness to all parties. Okay, so with that, where we left this was you were going to provide a streetscape because we thought this was important enough to see it as a group. And um, I'll give you the floor. Yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. So that's uh, what we've done. So basically, we're just looking to change the uh, sash to black. Uh, basically for both two four uh, and six highland and on sheet d uh 3.8 which i think is up on the screen you can see the the streetscape with the, the color scheme uh shutters are uh different between the two structures so i do think that there is a certain level of variety there um and so with that look forward to comments from the board mr chair thank you uh holly uh thank you mr chair um, I think I'm going to keep my comments is, is the same as before, where I don't believe black is appropriate, but I do uh, appreciate the uh, streetscape that was provided with my comments. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Um, before we move on, I think I'd like to just ask that one of you all, let's have the agenda modified uh, for the sake of uh, posterity uh, to indicate old business. I, I don't think it's a big dish issue, but We'll have it modified and add the board members for the final print. And then if we need to, we can ratify that at the next meeting. Uh, uh, is there a, a historic advisory group? I'm, I'm here, Steve. Vicki, I, you know, I hate to say this, but it just occurred to me that that acronym is HAG. <laughs> we don't so say it that way. Yeah, SAG. I can understand why. Oh, it's H SAG, um, Historic Structures Advisor. It's still pretty bad. It's still pretty bad. Uh, uh, Mickey, if you could go ahead and identify the members of your group and uh, then proceed, please. Sure. This is Mickey Rowland uh, representing the Historic Structures Advisory Group, which includes Angus McLeod, Jason Finger, Lucy Dillon, Mary Bergman, Marsha Fader, and Sandy Kendall. So our thoughts on this application are that, you know, the objective with these houses is to make them, um, to have them fit into the neighborhood and um, not stand out as being unique. Pretty much every other house in the cliff area has white sash. Black sash are not appropriate in this neighborhood. Um, 
Essex Green might be a good substitute, but it would still be a little unusual for the area. And I would also add that the charcoal gray will probably also um, stand out and be um, unique and inappropriate for the area. Thank you. Nick, can you, there was a, there's a hiccup in your feed. Can you repeat the comment about charcoal gray, please? Yeah, I was referring to the shutters on the app for the main house. They're applied or uh, they may already be approved as charcoal gray, but but they um, I, I still think that charcoal gray shutters are are pretty unusual for this summer neighborhood. Um, I just think they'll be inappropriate. OK, thank you. Uh, and I see a hand up, Amy. Uh, uh, Is that for this application? Uh, Amy, can you hear us? If we can, we can't hear you. Hi, can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Oh, did you want um, to speak about any of these? I, I was looking for public comment at the beginning of the meeting, so my hand has been raised since then. Will there be an opportunity for public comment? Because I have a matter of urgent, um, a, a matter that is urgent. Uh, let me confer with uh, the main chair here for a moment. What are you thinking? Why don't we take it? You just take uh, it now. Now, yeah, so um, Amy, the, the way that public comment works is that you can give your comments. Matt, we're putting you on hold. Just, That's fine, Mr. Chair. Just a second, um, you know, just so she's not kept waiting. Um, so you are able to give your comments on whatever it may be, hopefully HDC related. Um, but And immediately it goes yeah. to you. Linda, stop. Let's we respect the it. Ha it does. This does not respect. This does not apply to any particular project. Correct, Amy. It reply. It pertains to a letter that I wrote you on March fifteenth, and I am simply asking why I have not heard from the commission uh, on this matter of urgency. Um, I'm, I live at 76 Union Street and on No, January no, that, okay, stop, stop right there. Public comment is not about specific topics. Those have to be noticed and discussed, publicly noticed, which this is not. It can only be a general comment. So I cannot take that as a public comment at this time. Sorry. Even though I wrote you a letter on March 15th? I'm sorry. Uh, we can't do that without public notice. Hollywood, did you want to address this? Mr. Chair, um, I will reach out to you, but yes, that we did receive a letter from um, Amy and it was forwarded to you per her request. This is an item that is not on the agenda, so we cannot have the discussion as you Correct. mentioned. So we'll reach out to you, Amy, outside of the commission's meeting. Okay. Thank you. And if it goes on an agenda, we'd like it, to- Linda, notified. stop. There's no. no discussion about this right now. No discussion. No discussion. Okay. We'll reach out this week. Is that correct? Okay. okay. Thanks, Holly. Okay. There's that. Uh, what, back to you, Stephen. Sorry. Okay. So, uh, Matt, we're back. I think where we were is you presented. Holly spoke. Nikki spoke. Anyone have any questions for Matt? Uh, remind you, it is myself, Joe, Carrie, Connie, and if we need a pinch hitter on the new application, um, new business, the main house, Ray. I thought I was on it. Oh, did I miss here? Well, I don't know. Maybe nothing on the screen right now. Microsoft. <clears throat> uh, maybe we can resolve agenda or uh, members in the meantime. Yeah, sorry. No, that's fine. Sorry. Um, we have Joe, <laughs> Carrie, Connie, Val, Steve. Oh, so, okay. So, Val. Yeah, Val. Excellent. Val Oliver. Do you want to wait? No, I think we can talk. I mean, if you want to reference what's on the screen, we can wait, but. Oh, no, I just meant. Yeah, yeah, no, we'll, um, we'll keep going. 
Yeah, I I also feel black is not appropriate in this area, especially a little conglomeration of them. Um, I wouldn't mind black shutters or black doors, but white trim and black sash and yeah, um, I I don't think it fits in with the neighborhood. And I stupidly thought streetscape meant like pictures of the whole street, you know, but anyway, um, that's my comment. Okay, thanks, Val. Let's see, Connie. Yeah, I'm in agreement with Val. I don't so much mind the charcoal gray doors and garage, but it's the black sash that I'm not too crazy about. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Joe. Yeah, um, I think that I mean, obviously fitting in with the context is the objective, and most of the buildings are white trim um that being said i think um there's a possibility for one structure to depart from the white that's everywhere else i do have an issue with um both of the addresses having matching black sash color um i i liked um Mickey's idea of the Essex green. Um, I do think that if you adjust the sash on the home with the charcoal shutters that you probably need to look at adjusting the color of the charcoal shutters. Um, I'm sorry, I'm getting into like making suggestions here, but the, the structure with the Hamilton blue door I think it'd be interesting to see what that would look mm -hmm. like potentially with a maybe it's got Hamilton blue shutters or Hamilton blue sash. Um, so I guess my overview would be I don't think that the two structures should match one another, the two addresses. And I um I do think there's an opportunity for one of them to depart from the white on white. Okay, thank you, Joe. Yeah. Carrie. Um, yeah, I don't think uh, black is appropriate up here. As I recall, the HDC spent a lot of time trying to make these buildings look like they didn't belong to each other um, because it all sort of reads as one big property. And I think we would just be going backwards if all of them were black. Um, and I, I, I think Joe has an interesting thought. Um, the smaller building on the right, maybe you play with some different color scheme there, but not so bold and in your face um, if it is gonna be different from white. So that's my commentary, thank you. Uh, thanks, Carrie. So Matt, I'm kind of on board with all this. I'm gonna give you some specifics. We are talking about colors, so it's kind of hard not to. Uh, the structure on the left, uh, I would not be adverse to black shutter, black door, white sash. Uh, the garage, I think, <clears throat> needs to, uh, I, I would prefer that it is paired with the color wise with the structure on the right, mm -hmm. because I wouldn't want to see that black, but if it's going to be individualized with respect to color, I think uh, an Essex or more of an invisible green, which is a little bit darker. And uh, I do like the idea of a, uh, a muted color uh, muted with respect to it's not itself a focal point, but it is uh, like the Hamilton blue and maybe the Hamilton blue shutters. And um, I think in this neighborhood as well as in others, uh, you know, this isn't a Puritan, uh, very strict presentation of these structures. You, even I think the old jail has a, has a, a cottage red door and trim. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't think we need to be afraid of color or we don't necessarily need to be cut, shutting it down. I think, the important thing here for me and for the group is that these do have a sense of uh, fitting in with the neighborhood and black is not going to do that. Okay. So if I could then just with that, just ask to hold the application. I'll talk with the clients, but I think that they're probably going to lean to keeping it to the way it was approved originally color wise, but mm -hmm. 
just in case there's some variation that was discussed tonight, I might I might come back, but probably not likely. But okay. hear you loud and clear. Sounds good. So how about a motion to hold for uh, potential revisions? I make a motion to hold for revisions. Okay. Uh, Val on your motion. Aye. Joe. Aye. Connie. Aye. Carrie. Aye. And I'm an aye. And back to you, Mr. Chair. Was yeah. that all of them? Yeah. That was all of them. Yes. Four. Yes. Okay. Just not okay. Got four. All right. Great. Okay, so now we're on to new business of uh, March 5th. Uh, new driveway at 15 Coffin. There's an established, <clears throat> it's old business, but uh, I think there's a letter on established board, myself, Stephen, Diane, Val, Connie. What? Oh, okay. Uh, Joe, can you sit on this? Connie's left the room for a moment. Sure. Okay. She got uh, away. What? She got away. She got away. Okay. Um, <clears throat> new drive, 15 coffin. Linda, go. Well, there's not much more to say. You guys were going to take a view. Right. I don't know if anybody could even find the street. I, 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 I had to come in from the other from side. Across the street. Okay. Is there somebody that wanted to speak on this? Do I understand? There's a letter. A letter. Yeah, because there were some concerns about construction without permits and all the rest of that stuff back we, there. We do have a hand raised, Mr. Chair. Uh, whoever has their hand raised, if they could unmute and, and name Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chairman, can you hear me? Yeah. Thank you. My name's Mark Filipski. I own the property at five and south road, five and seven south road, which is directly north of the of the property that we are discussing. I think this is fairly simple and can be quickly stated. The family, the Lords, put in what we consider, the adjacent neighbors consider to be a large commercial scale like parking lot in towards the Northern part of their property without filing for a permit. They have subsequently done so after we advised them that they should have. And I think they were told they didn't need one, frankly, is my recollection but that's hearsay. They have a driveway off of Coffin Street, which has been there for many years. If you look at the map, it appears to us that could have been expanded, but they chose not to. They did not discuss this in any kind of neighborly way with any of us or notify us more officially, uh, the adjoining neighbors, the McRobies, the Paulsons, the Grays, and the Philipskis. We understand and we know that in the past they've rented the home and we're not against that. We think they will rent their homes in the future. And so this little one lane modest road, South Road, um, will be, in our opinion, our opinion, affected by this increased traffic. So in conclusion, it just seems to us that the scale of this parking lot, I think they're removing now the Belgian block. The look was just very, very, atypical for the neighborhood neighborhood and it just seemed like it would be affecting all of our property with you know more traffic and a diminution of the streetscape uh tranquility that's that's all i had to say thank you okay can thank i you. just clarify nope. some stuff thank you for your comments holly holly <clears throat> um thank you mr chair so just want to for the record the uh, dwelling on the lot is uh, circa 1938 hab trot um and they're removing the access off a coffin and adding on to self road um and that i pretty much i was glad that we've had this on a view because um with all the concerns i thought that was appropriate um this is technically an as built i uh, just wanted to bring that to your attention um, I don't believe there was any fee associated with that, um, with the application. The uh, coffin, sorry, the, the um, one on the new, on the new side um, on South Road um, does require an apron um, that is a paved road, my understanding, yep. um, that is per the zoning bylaw. Um, so really and truly it's looking at what's already approved or what's already been done. Um, and I would just want to make sure that conforms with the zoning bylaws dimensionality requirements 
uh, 139-20.1. Fiona, if you wouldn't mind putting the pictures up, that would be great. Those are my comments, Mr. Chair. Yeah, Thank it's you. not deep enough. It's not 10 feet deep. Okay. It Holly, thank Bank. you. Do we have anything from Rob on this, or is Rob present? Rob is not here, but um, again, we did receive comments, concerns from the neighborhood, um, including uh, the, all the names that um, Mr. Flipsky had mentioned, which are in the record. My understanding, they didn't know they needed a permit until I stopped them, and then I brought it in here. But um, it was after the fact. I know they have to pay that, you know, the fine for it. But they did apparently. The Lords did apparently talk to whoever is on that street and were given the okay, provided that they contribute to the maintenance of the street. And they did the Belgian block uh, appropriately, so the shell didn't get out into the street. Um, so the, I know there were discussions with somebody on that South Road. I don't. I wasn't privy to that because I was brought in to try to fix this. Okay, Linda, thank you. Okay, we ready to turn it over to the board? Myself. Just, uh, if Mr. Filipski, could I please uh, make one more point in reference to the prior comment? Quickly, yep. Thank you, very quickly. That is an incorrect statement, just for a matter of fact. Thank you. That's what I was told, so. Okay. I can't verify it one way or the other. Right, okay. So board, myself, Stephen, Diane, Val, and we have Joe Paul sitting on this. Who'd like to begin? I'll try. Thanks, Val. Um, so yeah, it's unfortunate this stuff happens. Um, seems to happen a lot lately. <laughs> but uh, I, I think the material is, it's shell, correct? Yeah. Um, is appropriate in the area. I do agree. I think it's a, a huge expanse, which isn't anywhere else on this street or actually in the area. So I would like to see some sort of mitigation planting at the very least to um, soften it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I don't think any other, I know the aprons are required, but there are not any other aprons that I could see on the street. That was probably prior to the, the bylaw, but um, it definitely needs some screening at the very least. Okay. Well, they didn't want to back and out And we have into the no street. control over traffic, unfortunately. Yeah. We're just the visuals, so uh, that's all we can tend to. Thank I think you. they did the turnaround so they didn't have to back out into that little street. Let's let's streamline, please. Yeah, I'll go, Mr. Chair. Had you finished, Val? Yeah. Okay, Stephen. So, uh, Linda, as you know, the the you know the apron is um, a necessity under zoning. The flare, yeah. which begins with the flare, which is on both sides of the driveway at the apron, begins some ten or fifteen feet in along the driveway, and I just. It, it's this driveway width at the street, the apron is twice as wide as it needs to be. I think this needs to be, this needs to be a straight shot in. So the flare gets eliminated. The apron will be cut nearly in half and there needs to be, um, uh, I think every once in a while you'll see privet out in Sconset. <laughs> so that would be something that would be beneficial to be blocking the visibility of the parking area. And I think it will be more meaningful once this is turned into a straight shot without any increase in the width of the existing parking or the existing driveway. Mm -hmm. And before I, if it went that way with an approval, I would want to see a uh, aerial with this, with a car in the driveway uh, that exists. So we get. I, I don't want to see this like widen because they misunderstood and I'm not suggesting you would do that, but clearly they have an inability to understand that there's some rules in place. And I think the width of this driveway is integral and being as thin as possible is integral to a successful solution. So I, or we could just set the width at 12 feet. Yeah, 12 feet is the minimum. I think that that would be the way to do it. Okay. I Thank can't you. get an aerial because it doesn't show up yet. 12 feet's fine. It shows okay. up on the Google map, I think. Yeah, but. sort of. Stephen, thank you. Let Mr. Chair, may yes. I, through you, ask Stephen a question? Yeah. Um, 
a plan with some real dimensions to scale would be good as well. Good boy. Thank you. Um, let's see, Diane and Joe. I'll go. Aren't I on this? I'll go. Yes, Diane, go. No, it's ahead. been here already. Okay. I, I agree with it going down to 12 feet straight shot in. No fence fences to close it off. No fences going around the side. Reduce mm -hmm. the ap so-called apron and uh, put in planting along the straight front, straight shot going in to reduce the overwhelming size of that parking lot on a two small streets. That's what I think. Okay, thank you, Diane. Joe? Um, I would agree with the comments that have been said. Um, I looked at GIS to see if there was an updated aerial, uh, maybe a drone image would be helpful if the applicant wanted to pursue that. The, the parking area next door at nine is substantial and they happen to have two curb cuts. They've got a substantial parking area and a turnaround. So I don't think what's happening on the interior of the property is um, an issue. I think it boils down to the driveway and where it meets the street. So I think all of Stephen's comments are in line with what I'm thinking as well. A dimension plan and a straight shot in. And if there was an aerial that was current, that would be a uh, that would be a great way to evaluate the two of them together. Those are my yeah, that, comments. That one up there is 2018 on the screen up above you. Okay, Joe, you're finished, right? Yes, sir. All right, thank you. Um, so I agree with everything that's been said, particularly with regard to vegetating so you're not looking at the expansive parking mm -hmm. narrowing up the apron portion so that it's a straight shot in okay. and uh dimensions on the plan so <clears throat> i'm going to make a motion that yep. we receive a dimensions <clears throat> plan that accurately represents the existing with one exception which is a 12 foot straight shot uh, modification to the apron and flare of the drive so that we can easily review and approve this at the yes. next hearing that we have and so planting. we are going to re-review it i think so yeah and planting okay. and the plant yeah of course the plant can planting. we do that through staff no i, no, I, I want to no. see it let's just all right can well we, we can see it steven's motion i believe is to have all that and we're going to review it again so hold for revisions correct to say it can't go on consent no it needs to be turned in what so we can review that i want the commission to review it yeah or a commissioner yes okay a lot of a lot of people are saying a lot of things right now uh val mentioned the idea of the fee which we can take up when we're reviewing this for the final time no yeah. just hit it now oh and, a, and the four time fee yeah is that four? what it is four I times it was 10. 10. No. Oh, it's 10 it's 10. 10. it's like one for each toe you can either <laughs> take the fee or the toes it's it's, it's 10 times bucks. but the, the fee is not so it's, onerous it's to oh, begin with 500. historically been 10 times yeah it has been i amount. think building is late fee for buildings so building is okay times. so steven your motion is essentially to hold for revisions correct uh no specific oh. uh dimension plan Sorry. accurately <laughs> representing the existing conditions with the exception of the driveway portion which shall be modified to 12 feet width and planting uh, plan. show the planting plan and um uh, and the as-built fee shall be assessed yep but for 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 another review yeah those yep. are that's my for it's for revision agenda for yeah the specific revisions yeah. you gotta put another four uh, okay inch. all right everyone understands steven's motion on the motion diane aye val aye joseph Aye. Stephen. Aye. And I'm in favor. Thank okay, you. that's that. Um, the that's first item under new business was taken up earlier. The second item is three step lane, gutters, regular board on this. Do we have somebody to rent? <clears throat> Thank you. 
Okay. Raised hand on mute and your name for the record, please. Haley, you need to, oh, you're good now. Can you hear me? Yes. Sorry about that. Uh, my name is Haley Byer with Union Studio. Okay. So we are proposing to use a painted fiberglass gutter with a historical profile on the east and west elevations. Um, our reasoning is that because of the height of the structure, we believe it'll be visually indistinguishable from wood. Um, and because of the height of the structure and the proximity to surrounding structures, we have concerns about maintaining the, a wood gutter. Is that it? That's it. Okay. Holly. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So as you remember, you all approved the um, basically rebuild um, an, of a new structure to replicate the historic veranda house that um, had it. We lost to a catastrophic fire um, in July of 2022. 22? Yeah, I think so. Um, the um, National Park Service Secretary of Interiors has a technical brief um, on the use of substitute materials. I believe I had mentioned you, you, to you all that there was a uh, webinar recently on that, specifically on historic structures. Um, but this is a replica. Um, as best as possible within the OHG and specifically uh, the rehab standards um, quote purposefully allow for the use of substantial materials when the use of original materials is not uh, reasonably possible or in new construction, such as this. Uh, there is flexibility in the standards um, to be applied um, cumulatively and quote when the overall effect of the work in the context of the specific conditions of uh, the property and the project is consistent with the property's historic character. Um, I think what is important is the appearance of the material, its physical properties matching the wood and performance of material over time. Um, the location of the gutter um, it is important to consider. So those are just some thoughts for your um, discussion. Thank you. Okay, Holly, thank you. Mickey? Yes, we had um, we had sort of mixed feelings on this one. We, you know, obviously we prefer wood. Um, whether or not you'll actually be able to distinguish the difference between the two is questionable. Our only concern was that the, the profile of the gutter is a little boxy. It's not really quite the normal wooden gutter profile, and that may be a little discernible. But you know, we were kind of in between on this one. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. There are other profiles, like one with a Scotia underneath it. Yeah. Um, okay, to the board, it is the regular board. Who would like to begin? I'll go. Yes, Val. Um, I, given where it is and that nobody's ever going to get to it, I think it makes sense to make it a, some sort of man-made material. And right up the hill at the church, the congregational church, we approved something on the tower Oh, if yeah. I remember correctly, the whole tower. Yeah. So that they for maintenance reasons. So yeah. I'm OK with this. OK, if the thank profile you. needs to tweak, I'll leave that up to you guys, but I'm OK. OK, Mr. Chair. Yes. If I may to add to Val's point, yeah. I think it's a very good one because the Congregational Church is also, also one held by a preservation restriction that's held by NPT um, into being a historic structure. You know, it, it, it shows that it, it has it can be done not only for infill, but so just something to consider. Thank Very you. good. Thank you. All right. So Val has spoken. Who else? Who would like I'll, to go? I'll go. Thank you, Diane. I, I think we can use the material, but as long as it looks like the old stuff and not like something. I think the picture they have in it does not look like what our gutters look like. So that's all I would like the profile to be accurate or as accurate as possible. Okay, Diane, thank you. Let's see, that leaves Stephen and Abby. I, I have nothing to add. Okay. Nothing to add. Okay, Stephen. Um, I'll go. I, I agree with Diane. I will point out um, two elements looks like. One is looks like wood, which it does, which is good. Um, 
So the other is this is very um, similar to our four inch versus three inch fur gutter profile. Yes. So I'm not as concerned about that given the other uh, ornamental details on the structure. I think this is at the height it's gonna be utilized, gonna blend in. The only other thing I'll add to comments is that um, one component that is I think very beneficial is resilience. And what by that, I mean, this isn't uh, gonna come off uh, it's not going to need Chevron shingle oil applied every three years, uh, leaching into the harbor, and then also then being replaced after 20 or 30. These will be there uh, probably for quite some time. Those are my comments. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Okay, uh, and I was gonna I was gonna say that there's another gutter like this. This is your this profile is a classic four by five gutter as opposed to the three by four, the smaller one that Stephen referenced. There is a version of this that has a built-in Scotia underneath, but I'm not going to pick that little particular piece apart. So I think I'm going to go with the group on this one. Could we have a motion? <clears throat> motion to approve as submitted. Okay, that is Val's motion. On Val's motion, Stephen? Aye. Abby? Aye. V uh, Diane? Aye. Val on your motion? Aye. And I'm in favor. Oh, uh, Stephen has a parting comment. Haley, while we have you, can you just put to bed something that's going around the community, like weather at the grocery line? Um, th this structure has, to my understanding, not been constructed taller than it was before. Is that correct? I believe that is the case. Okay. If, if it's not, please let us know. It's funny, I drove by it today yeah. <clears throat> with somebody else that. in the car, and, and she said, oh my goodness, it's so tall. I think it's because there's no porch. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly yeah. There's right. no grade, yeah, there's no I, porch. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, neighbor I mean, you to sort of let that one sit yeah. for a little while. Okay, thank you, everyone. Um, let's see, the next application I need to recuse from. Okay. Um, so I'm hoping you can share that, Stephen. I'll and be back right after that. Three it's pleasant. three pleasant, yeah. Oh, Here's before that. we begin, I'm sorry, <clears throat> what application are you here for? 63. Okay, so that's coming up quick. Just I had a reminiscent that sometimes they were very late in the agenda. Yeah, we did that last week. All right, uh, Matt. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. So this is an application for an addition to uh, the existing home at Three Pleasant. Um, the original structure dates from 1804. Um, uh, thankfully, the additions are additive, and so we're not doing uh, any significant demolition. The, the main core and the historic portion of the house are staying intact, both uh, internally and exterior, uh, externally. Um, so. If you look at the site plan, you can see where we've identified the addition. It's it's about 700 square feet, and it actually happens towards the rear of the uh, property, uh, but also projects towards the uh, north. Is that correct? Um, in terms of the massing, we tried to match existing, uh, you know, roof pitches, uh, window trim. Um, actually, we kind of stepped down the rake detail, so it's a, a bit secondary to the to the primary mass, if you will. Uh, the rear of this house, if you looked at the existing condition drawings at eighth inch scale at all the elevations and then also the historic, I'm sorry, uh, the site photographs, uh, the rear of the structure is um, a bit unique in terms of its massing schematic. And so uh, doing an addition um, that works with those roof lines, we felt that this was the most sympathetic and supportive of the existing massing sch schematics, uh, most specifically from the east elevation, which is the Pleasant Street elevation. So again, it's set back fairly far. You can see that in the north elevation and um, uh, the existing uh, secondary mass, um, which is uh, again on the east elevation left side, you'll see that we uh, integrated the same style of, of addition, if you will. Um, towards the rear, there's a, a three season porch with a, a built in balcony, but we feel that the visibility of that is minimal. And again, we've worked, if you look at the west elevation uh, comparatively, existing conditions versus proposed uh, there's this unique second floor really narrow gable additive mass uh, that we were able to to work around if you will uh, and also like a one-story hip so um, i tried to make the drawings as express as expressive as possible in terms of the scope so with that look forward to comments from the board mr chair thank you okay thanks matt holly 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. So um, this structure is circa 1804, typical Nantucket, and it was built by uh, for Reuben Dow. Uh, this is a 770 square foot addition, and it's a pro proposed addition should follow the traditional secondary mass sizing and additive requirements as outlined in building with Nantucket in mind and historically appropriate additive massing. Um, that would leave that two story L um, but provide a less subordinate mass off the side. And I would reference uh, page 67 of building with Nantucket in mind. The age of the rear L should be provided if at all possible. I know it's not annotated on the old 89 HDC survey, um, but I do uh, recall this structure is actually um, indicated within uh, Kenneth Dupre's old Nantucket houses. Um, the uh, new addition should be no greater than the existing rear L. The addition of the pergola is, is inappropriate for this 200 year old typical Nantucket. It would be better suited off the rear and not seen off the public uh -huh. way. Um, the peekaboo effect um, off the addition as seen on the south, although probably not visible, um, it is not appropriate. Uh, the mass should be brought down as much as possible. The windows being removed from the existing rear mass, um, as seen on the north, um, be nice to know if those could be retained. Um, I didn't see anything about windows in the application. Uh, appreciate the uh, retention of the historic uh, chimneys, um, especially the rear L and the and in the appropriate. Um, oh, and appreciate the addition off the main block and not being on the main block itself, keeping it as far off the rear as possible. So those are my comments, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Holly. Uh, Mickey? Okay. Um, this, um, this, this project, this, these additions are much too massive in all respects. It's very awkwardly placed in terms of additive massing. <clears throat> the roof lines of the new gable compete with the main mass. It needs to be lower and more integrated into the existing roof system not simply tacked onto the rear. The French doors are all inappropriate. The bracketed porch roof facing the front is inappropriate. Um, the first and second floor plans illustrate how large these rooms are that are being added on. They're all out of scale compared to the, to the house itself. I, you know, we feel this needs to be reconsidered at a more appropriate scale to the existing building. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mickey. And, and Mr. Chair, I did yep, want to uh, mention, I apologize. We did receive a, uh, letter back an email back in March 11th that was forwarded to the commission from a direct of butter at five Pleasant Street. So okay. I just wanted to mention that for you all. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So uh, we are going to have an alternate on this and I think we're fresh in the rotation. So why don't we go with Carrie senior member. And um, who would any questions, comments, Abby, I, I you want me to Go ahead. Yep. Opine. Opine. I hate that word. Hmm. Um, so I agree with uh, HSAB. Um, HSAG. Um, yeah. So the the additive massing is is uh, overwhelming the original historic uh, structure. Um, I also think the windows on the second floor are too tall and narrow. They should be more like the twelve or for twelves on the front of the house. Um, I agree about the French doors on Pleasant Street. Uh, if that was just one door with the appropriate side window, you wouldn't have that kind of wall-eyed effect of that two spread apart. Um, yeah, and I, also the pergola um, on the front and going around the side, um, or I guess it's the brackets on the front and the pergola going around the side is inappropriate. Um, and I think the massing in general is just too large, it just overwhelms. So, um, you know, do that stuff in the back, but save us the historic on the Pleasant Street sign. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Val? I have nothing to add that hasn't been said. Okay, Diane? I also have nothing to add. I agree with what has been said also. Okay, thank you, Carrie. Yeah, I everybody said really great things. I'm on board. <laughs> okay, thank you. So Matt, uh, Thanks for uh the bunny. I think the message is perhaps a little too ambitious on the side. Um yeah, I, I think I've got enough feedback here. 
Okay. Uh, so, uh, how about a motion? Motion to make a motion to hold for revisions. Okay, Diane. How about uh, your vote on your motion? Aye. Excellent, Val. Aye. Other Diane. Uh, Abby. Aye. Harry. Aye. And I'm an I. All right, back to you, Mr. Chair. Okay, I thanks. Ah, uh, let's see. <clears throat> Five Coffin Street. Exterior alterations, also, Matthew. Yes. <clears throat> so, thank you, Mr. Chair. So, this is a renovation to uh, Five Coffin. Uh, the original structure dates from 1930. Um, uh, you can wait till it comes up on the screen. If you want. I was like, that looks not familiar. Uh, a majority of the changes, we're not proposing to add any new ground cover. So we're working within the existing footprint of the building and um, worked to be uh, sensitive to the existing massing and not really make any significant changes to the, to the main mass and what we would um, identify as the uh, the original uh, portion of the structure clearly there's been some additions to the structure uh, in later years uh, specifically the full second floor uh, plate height that intersects the uh, the original hip if you will so um, the aesthetics in terms of fenestration and street orientation specifically the facade of the structure uh, don't actually uh, face uh, the street if you will uh, it's more towards the interior of the property um, and so with that uh, which is the existing front door we tried to just embellish or, or improve as much as we could uh, what we would uh, designate the uh, facade or, or uh, front of the building, uh, which is the west elevation. And again, ironically, it's, it faces in uh, to the property. Um, and so uh, it's not highly visible. Um, the uh, fenestration changes that we're uh, making are the most significant ones. Uh, I'd say that the majority of them are ded um, dedicated to the west elevation. And really what we try to do is just be respectful of the existing uh, massing schematic and try to improve it as much as possible utilizing the existing uh, architectural details and language so I think the changes are evident in the drawings and so with that look forward to uh, comments from the board Mr. Chair thank you. Okay Matt. Oh yeah I'm on. Uh, thanks Matt. Uh, Holly. Thank you Mr. Chair so yes for the record this is a circa 1930 dwelling within the old historic district of Sconset. Um, and there is an HDC survey on file indicating it's contributing. Uh, <coughs> I'm, uh, I'm noticed on the application that it indicates of uh, SDL windows um, and doors. I don't think those are appropriate, um, especially for a historic structure within the OHD of Sconset. Retention of existing windows should be done at all possible. Appreciate the proposed uh, porch extension um, that is in keeping with the bungalow type cottage. The west elevation changes seem to have a lot of glazing and I recommend checking the percentage as noted within building when they attack it in mind. I did receive an email from Mr. Rob Benchley who represents the Sconset Advisory Group. Um, it's also made up of Clement Durkis, uh, Angus McLeod, Mary Lathrop Will and Caroline Ellis. Uh, he said, um, simply put, it seems like there's too much glass in the east and west elevations, especially for this part of the village so close to it to the core. So those are their comments. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Shall we get to the board on this one? Could, could I just add a quick, quick um, comment just yeah. briefly, Mr. Chair? So and by uh, specifically the first floor fenestration. So the existing second floor uh, fenestration is there's a high concentration of it in that second floor. And so uh, when we started, we actually had like single A type windows, but it just looked disparate. It looked like the, the first floor wasn't fenestrated enough. Uh, so just wanted to point that out that we did try it with less and it just looked balanced. And again, I also think that the first floor is not really going to be visible if anybody's familiar with the, the site due to the existing vegetation. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Matt. Board members, regular board. I could give it a shot. Abby's going to go. Okay. Here Nobody go. else is ready. I, um, so, um, you know, I like the, uh, bungalow style that you're promoting. I, I think it's, it, it's actually helping that, especially that West interior, that West elevation. Um, I do think that, you know, those two little windows you have, um, up next to the, uh, 
the ga- the two Second gangs. Floor. I think I think just one. I, I think it's drawing. It's fine to have an anomaly, but two. That's too, too much. But um, so and then something else caught my eye. Um, I think a long coffin, which uh, which is south. Is that south? Um, yes. Uh, it is south. So east looks, um, yeah, towards the water. So we won't see that. So I'm just looking for south. Yeah, I think I think that's my. I think uh, it's Lindbergh, right? That that it actually faces. Yes. Yeah. So so I, I think the main concern is Lindbergh, and I, I think I think it's just that one window that bothers me. Thank you. Okay, Abby. Thank you. Who's next? I'll go. All right, Diane. I think the windows, didn't it come up that they wanted to use SDLs and they should be TDLs? I believe that some of the existing windows are uh, SDLs, but you can, you know, change the window types that the, whatever the board prefers. Well, it's, it's a historic building and stuff, and it's in the old historic district and all that stuff. It seems to be it's it should be calling for that if possible. I don't, uh, I guess the windows make as much sense as the old ones did. Uh, I don't know whether the little porch over there on the left under the two windows from the second floor, although it needs kick panels, or bring it down a little bit to put it up where the other windows all come down along the rest of the thing. Other than that, I don't think I have anything else. Okay, Diane, thank you. Let's see, Val and Stephen. Okay. Uh, Matt, I think my comments are probably not going to carry a lot of weight because a lot of this isn't going to be visible, but I think- Your microphone. Last... Thank you, Diane. You're welcome. Uh, I... I think the west elevation is unfortunately kind of a wasted effort. Um, the the six over two fenestration seems out of place, especially it's almost like a juxtaposition with that semi bracelet, the the uh, mm. door uh, glazing, and it's almost as if those windows should reflect that gla- the door glazing. And then a t- it'd be over a, over a, a lower sash that's a too light. But again, if it's not going to be visible, uh, the next comment again, if it's not going to be visible, is uh, the number three th- triple doors, which I think at very least would have some type of a panel, which would pick up the vocabulary of the front door, and um, the two. Four lights are one too many, as Abby said. On that elevation, nothing on the south. If anything happens to the doors on the west, I think it's happened on the east, and nothing on the north. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Thanks, Stephen Val. I actually have nothing to add that hasn't been said. Again. And uh, okay. Thank you. Val. And um, if there's some concern about SDL versus TDL, we need a um, window survey to see what's there. And personally, I think given what's on the first floor, that ginormous hedge, we're only going to see the second floor. And I'm not sure anybody's going to be close enough to be able to discern that. Okay. Val, thank you. And I only have one. <clears throat> one little issue and yes there's a big hedge around it now which you know someday might not be there so it is on the west elevation which faces Lindbergh and that's this this the new porch is basically a shed roof with an appended kind of pushed further out hipped roof and I know that that was done to sort of enunciate the quote, front door, but I think having like one porch roof sort of stacked on top of another porch roof is not great. Um, And also I wonder whether the shed roof, the long shed roof, farmer's porch 
roof shouldn't be a hip to sort of go go move back to the existing porch roof which is a hipped roof and looks quite attractive and is in keeping mm. and sort of mimics the dormers you know which are hipped dormers so like that's like literally the only concern i have about this application so you got kind of a potpourri of things there matthew okay we did if i could mr chair we did try that hip and for and we can show you what that looks like as an option when we come back we did try the hip roof um, for the first floor porch and for some reason uh, because the plate height is so high it's not high comparatively on the second floor it, uh, it just looked a bit odd. We could certainly bring that in to show you what it looks like. I'd love to see what it looks like. Sure. You know, and if I saw it as a hipped roof, I might actually be feel better about the hipped roof that's the hip on hip bracketing the front door. Anyway, should we hold this for revisions? So moves. Minor. All right. Yeah, minor. Um, so Stevens made a motion for minor revisions on that motion. Abby. I'm an I. Val. I. Diane. I. Stephen. I. And I'm in favor. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. I like the bark at 20, the end. Yeah, 2024. <laughs> Me too. Yes. <laughs> 24 Rugged Road, Pergola. Okay. Uh, with your permission, I'll start, Mr. Chair. Yeah. So this is, um, uh, this structure actually was originally located on Eel Point Road um, and was moved to the site about a year ago. And um, it's for a year-round family uh, that moved into it, very happy. Um, they are looking to um, add this pergola for some outdoor uh, partial shade. So um, it's fairly straightforward. It's just an application for a pergola. That's all I have, Mr. Chair. Thank okay. You. Um, do we have you on this, Holly? No. Okay. Right to the board on this one. Don't we have a rule about depths well there's certainly a rule about depth of of uh a poor second floor decks and porches and such but uh i don't know that there's any rule per se about pergolas but well um it's up to you guys uh, if i'm going first i'll just say you that are i think going first okay i'm forcing my way into being number one here yeah. um <laughs> I, I, I think it looks a little forced. I would pull it back a couple of feet. Okay. Keep it in proportion. Thank you. All right. Short and sweet. Thank you. Who's next? I'll go. Yep. Uh, I've been by this a couple of times. I think, uh, Matt, you might accomplish a similar outcome by adding a vertical element on the rugged roadside, uh, some type of lattice where the post is to create, instead of having the vertical roof and a single post, there's some type of a, a, a more weight where the column is visually. And I think that that's gonna decrease the, per, it's gonna modify the perception of that just being a large roof element over a small post. It will that make it look less wide is the point. Uh, and certainly if there's some beautiful binding material planted on it. Those are my comments, thanks Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you. Val, Diane. Okay. Um, That's I think foul. The, yes, sorry, foul. Um, I think the reason that it seems like it doesn't actually necessarily go is that it's the same exact width as the house. Mm -hmm. So definitely cutting it back a few feet would help and maybe just simplifying it instead of having that big overhang. Yeah, what mm -hmm. is that? Um, and is it natural to weather? Um, yeah, I believe it is. Okay. So I right. agree with the maybe lattice thing, but just cut it back a few feet and I think it will feel like it is more appropriate. Okay. Thank you. That leaves you, Diane. You're muted, Diane. I have a barking dog. There um, we go. I, I agree with what Val said. It needs to come in make it a little less full it's wider it looks like it's wider than the little uh gable and it could come in <clears throat> to accept coming part of that front i don't mind it when you see the front straight on 
but it becomes very obvious when you see the side. So that's when I like the south and the north bring it in so it fits in better. That's all. Okay, Diane, thank you. <clears throat> I think that's everyone except me. And I'm I'm in agreement, you know, in terms of cutting back, scaling it back a little bit. Uh, should we hold for revisions on this, folks? No, oh, let's no? pass it through <laughs> staff. Yeah, let's do an Exhibit A. That an sounds, Exhibit A. Sounds good. All right. Um, I would make a motion to approve cutting it back to 12, keeping it natural to weather, adding a lattice on the roadside. That is my motion. And you said to simplify the oh yeah uh just a simpler yeah. end cut end yeah. cut oh, the that's sword, my motion swordfish okay <laughs> and that motion will be uh summarized in an exhibit a correct yep. who's who's doing that me oh great okay so um hopefully all of you know what the motion is on that motion abby i'm an i diane i steven i Val, on your motion. Aye. And I'm in favor. All Thank right. You very much. There we go. Now we're to Swift Rock. Is uh, Mirka back? She actually had to run out to bring her son to hockey. Are, are you going to? Oh, God. What? Hockey. 63 Homer. <gasps> I crossed right through. <laughs> so it's funny I'm getting it. Freudian, Freudian slip. Whoa. I'm so sorry. Okay. So this is you too, Matt. Um, okay. No changing the sheets this afternoon. I'm in the midst of a meeting. What? We'll do it tomorrow. Okay, sweetie? We're not changing oh, oh, the sheets. You're, you're oh, sweetie. Yeah. Okay, got it. I want the pink pillow. Okay. All right. Oh, Matt, go. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> so this is a 63 Holbert. Uh, you've seen this a, a few times. We're back before you with some uh, minor... Uh, fenestration changes. I'll run through them and summarize them as quickly as possible. Uh, on sheet A 2.1, um, south elevation, which is uh, visible from Hulbert, uh, we're proposing to go from uh, two windows to three on the second floor as clouded. Uh, on the right side, uh, we do have to elevate the uh, condensers, and we thought that this location on the right side of the south elevation was the, the most appropriate, the most hidden, um, and uh, that's what that is. Uh, on the left side um, of the south elevation, we're uh, requesting to add some steps up to what will become the mudroom entrance. Um, uh, just going through the plans and reviewing and editing, we realized that that side of the house is the most appropriate place for the mudroom access. So if you look at sheet uh, A2.4, uh, west elevation, you'll see that we have um, a stair. We also did put an outdoor shower uh, up on that platform. Now it is the stair does run in both directions, and that's that's not for aesthetics. That's purely for function, so that if you're either coming from the parking area or you're coming from the beach, you have access to to both sides. But I look forward to comments from the board on that. Second floor fenestration changes. Uh, we did add a, a second floor window uh, to the left side of the west elevation, and then on the um, uh, secondary additive mass, we took the two windows, uh, pulled them closer together, and then omitted the third gable window. And then sheet A3.1, we just have some perspectives for your reference. So with that, look forward to comments from the board, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Matthew. Chair, I'm going to sit off this because I'm still doing my exhibit A. Yeah, okay, fine. Um, let's see. Connie, you want to sit on this one? Okay. Connie's in. Val's out. Holly. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so for the record, this is the Reba Patterson Cooper and James Brown House. It's a colonial revival from circa 1915 to 1923. Um, we have a, a updated soon to be a Form B, aka HTC survey, but the old HTC survey on file indicates this is a contributing structure. You all, um, with your approvals to changes to the structure, approved historic determination which is on file. Um, the facade, which faces Holber Avenue, has always had two windows in the gable. Um, and the alterations previously approved kept, um, kept that way. The three windows alters that character defining features as seen from Holbert Avenue. And I don't think it's appropriate 
the door changes to the east um, is appropriate um, and more like uh, to the existing uh, um, dwelling um, with the, the door. The north, which faces the water, um, seems to increase the recommended glazing per building with Nantucket in mind um, and what exists historically. I was curious on what that percentage is with the, pro with the proposed changes. Outdoor showers seem to be out of place, um, elevated. I know this is probably something that the commission is going to see time and time, um, but it just a little odd up on top of the deck. The proposed friendship stairs on the west, um, I believe, is inappropriate to the vernacular. Uh, one side is sufficient, um, and I, I do remember that there was a proposal, I think, on the water side to have such a large stairwell. Um, and you all have looked at um, other applications in the past of other um, applicants with friendship stairs. And again, looking historically at what friendship stairs are actually um, contributed to, um, definitely not a colonial revival. So those are my comments, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Okay, Holly, thank you. Mickey. So the um, on the east side of the building, there's a, little, there's a, a proposed latticed screen um, structure. It, it's, it tends to look like a deck railing, you know, this, the, and it's, it's going you know, to be a lattice screen railing, which is sort of odd. I, that, that should look just like a simple fence to, to screen something, um, but not a complicated deck with a lattice railing. The, um, on the west side, the, out, the elevated outdoor shower is not appropriate. It should be down at grade level. That'll be very visible from the harbor. The friendship stairs are also not appropriate, as Holly said. <laughs> And I would also agree with Holly's comments about the, the change from the two windows to three in the front of the building facing Holbert. Thank you. Thanks, Mickey. W were you speaking on this? I forget. No. Anybody speaking on this? No. Okay. So <clears throat> regular board without Val and with Connie, who would like to begin? I'll go if necessary. Yeah, go ahead. Because I agree with what what basically Holly and uh, Mickey both said. They all uh, we've been saying it for quite some time, I think. So I that's what I think. I think it hasn't changed that much, and the, and our questions continue. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Diane. Who's next? I'll go. Thanks, Stephen. Uh, I think uh, Shower View Harbor is a tough sell, <laughs> and the um, that friendship stair isn't uh, appropriate. That's it. I prefer the two windows, but I'd also prefer that you roll it back and that small pip roof jog was there. But if it's not, I think the three is okay. I miss that the prior existing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Stephen. Let's see. That leaves Abby and Connie. I can go. All right, um, Connie. Yeah, I have nothing else to add. I'm in agreement with what's being said, especially about the shower and the stair. Um, I'm not as concerned about the three windows as opposed to two. Thank you. Okay. Abby? Yeah, I'm in, in agreement. With, I, I th actually think the three windows um, uh, aesthetically is is more pleasing than the two. Mm -hmm. uh, I agree about the shower, the lattice, but I don't know what else that could be. Maybe just a railing. Um, and the what, the friendship stairs, I think that's a bit much. Um, so I'm pretty much in agreement with everybody else. So, Matthew, yes. I think that the reason that that <clears throat> mechanical enclosure is because whatever is behind that lattice needs to be above the floodplain. That's correct. So how how can you reconcile that? Because actually, that's a concern of mine too. Um, I was going to uh, Mickey's suggestion about making it look like a fence, perhaps, or a railing, as opposed to. But lattice. if it's a railing, then you see through it true but i think 
I would say that if compared to lattice, it might kind of blend more because it looks like right. a railing, but really open to any suggestion you may have. Obviously, the challenge is that we do have to elevate it and yeah, how yeah, best I to screen it. it. All right, well, um, so that's a concern of mine. Friendship stair. I think I'm with Abby on the three windows. They actually line up with the three apertures down below. That's kind of a plus for it. And uh, the shower, the shower needs to be lowered down. The outdoor shower. Mr. Chair. Yes. I, Matt, I, I just, I think on that uh, east elevation, a shingle wall without a cap, or a natural to weather cap without a fascia would just that'll just disappear for, for it's going to read as a field as opposed to a separate texture if it's all one as I, most particularly if the shingle courses are lined up the way they normally would be mm -hmm. wrapping from one side all the way across to the um towards the french doors from the cor left corner of the house <clears throat> so you mean shingle it as if it were a parapet yeah just shingle it it's gonna you're not going to you'll see a shadow line but you're not going to i think it's primarily would just disappear we, we can certainly do that personally you can also eliminate the outdoor shower in that location yeah and it sounds like the and i sort of lost count of the pros and cons on the triple window facing south if i could mr chair those windows um oh, on the south did uh, did I get the right? Up? Yeah, north? south. You went from two to three. Oh I, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. <clears throat> there you're talking about on the north. Um, those those are existing triple windows on the north that were deeper, and so we actually shrunk those. That you're I, I was referring to the ones on the south. One of the comments was that going from the two to three was a negative. I think it was a tie. It sounded kind of like a tie to me. Yeah, for what it's worth, I, I do think that the three feels better. Uh, but okay, what should we do with this, folks? Stephen, you could make your motion. I, I think we could do an exhibit A. However, I will admit I'm not tracking all the details. All the details. I, I could I could run through what I think the board suggested. If that makes sense. Is Mr. Matt going to make a motion? Yeah, I think so. Let's have Matt make yeah. a motion. Um, so it would be um, the uh, east elevation uh, AC condenser enclosures would be a shingled uh, shingled railing. Um, we would omit the uh, shower on the uh, south and um, west north. elevation. A west <clears throat> and north. And uh, I guess eliminate uh, the friendship stair, just have the stairs run in one direction. I believe that's everything. I think that's got it. And do we have a preference on which direction? If, if it was up to me, I would say towards uh, Hulbert, only because if you're coming from that's your car, right. that would be the most convenient. You want to go out? <laughs> okay, so that will be my exhibit B motion exhibit b okay sorry is, it, is that with the three windows on the south on yes the south? okay cool. yeah the, we, we're keeping that one as is all righty <coughs> okay so that's steven's motion on steven's motion abby i'm an i <coughs> excuse me connie i <coughs> so sorry uh, diane Aye. Stephen, on your motion. Aye. And I'm in favor. Okay. Thank you very much. That's good. <coughs> All right. Now we're to Swift Rock. And I'm going to sit off this one. Okay. <coughs> you haven't been coughing as much, though. No, I didn't cough at all last week. A little stranger. Uh, sorry to miss it last there. week. What? I'm sorry to miss the meeting last week, last Tuesday. Thanks. Very sorry. 
It was an exciting one. And I, I, I'm glad my voice is kind of back, so I will try to speak up. But. Okay. All right. So uh, let's see, Stephen's office. So this is, Carrie, this, we haven't heard from you in a while. Okay, I'm here. <coughs> Sorry. You there? Yep. All right. Mirka. So no. this application, uh, I have another application for the pool. Uh, we kind of went ahead uh, before the main, while well, main has was still under the review. So we just wanted to get the party approved for the existing uh, structure. <coughs> so that's why this site plan is still reflecting the pre-approvals, which Matt uh, followed up eventually after, like after we filed for this. So this is just really get this patio for the existing house in a you know on the side. Uh, as you can see, there is no visibility to it. There is the view from the road. It's the grading kind of slopes down. So this is just a stone granite patio at grade of the main house uh, of the existing house, which will become the guest house. Um, uh, I I have no more to to elaborate on this besides it's not visible and it's a great so that's it that's it application for a patio all right <clears throat> mr chair you do have a hand raised okay um, there are butters that are concerned with all, um like all the applications all for this them. for this property okay that's why they're so hand raised if you could unmute your name for the record please Sharon, you're unmuted. My name is Sharon Alexander. That was Diane, right? I was at there. Oh, yeah, that's right. Then we jumped back. Sharon, are you there? Yes, I'm sorry. There you go. Thank you. Okay, so right now we're speaking about the patio. Yes. Go ahead. So, so in addition to this 500, 504 square foot patio, there are two other patios to be considered under the pool hardscape. One is um, 380 square feet and the other one is 400 square feet. In addition, there's 840 square feet of decking um, to be considered under the pool hardscape bringing the total decking and patio square footage to 2124, which seems like a lot of hardscape. Uh, just to correct this, the follow-up application for a hardscape and pool, which is separate, just want to clarify. Right, but, but it's still, there's still uh, 2124 square feet of patio and um, decking. The other two patios near the pool and this patio plus the decking near the pool. Is that it? That's it. I was just asking you to consider the amount of hardscape. Okay. Thank you. Um, should I take it to the board now? Okay, board members. Regular board without Stephen and with Carrie. <clears throat> that will be for all four of these applications. Uh, can I just ask a general question? Because I'm not sure I'm looking at the right thing. So, because there are a lot of squares here and they're overlapping. And oh, you yeah. know what? Her, sometimes it's hard to see, like when you're trying to blow it up, it does mm -hmm. weird things. But it's the blue one, right? So yeah. it's just it's this blue. 14 by 36 Georgian granite patio. And it. Grade. And is it right where that blue yes, rectangle the blue is? Yes. Okay. Blue it's not to the left. Okay. No, it's right oh, kind of in the This back. doesn't look like your usual drawings. No. Are you in a <laughs> new <laughs> app? It's just a patio at Gravy. You know, just... All right. Well, um, so I'll, I'll just continue. Yeah, I guess. please do. 14 by 36. 14 by 36. Um, I mean, the 36 seems a little long, but I mean... I don't, I, I don't have, I take, uh, uh, this is so far back from the road. I think for this particular patio, I, I don't have a problem with it. Thank you. 
Okay, Abby, thank you. Who's next? I'll go. Uh, Carrie. Uh, yeah, it's it's that grade. It's uh, this won't be visible. Correct. Correct. I would agree. <clears throat> so that's all I have to say. Thank you. Uh, all right. Thanks, Diane Val. Uh, I would just go to ask a question. I see it goes along there. I don't know where they have what I've got up on my screen doesn't show where the pool is or anything else. Um, and I don't think the patio, whether it is annoying or not, you can see it. So, it, so I don't have a problem with it. Diane, thanks. Let's see, Val. Based on <coughs> the visibility, uh, I guess it's okay. It's it's unfortunate. It's not all together with the pool, but I can't even get the pool thing to come up. It keeps going away. <coughs> Did I hear in there that you were okay? Yeah. All right. So am I. May I have a motion? Motion to <coughs> approve. Thank you. Bill submitted. All right. Yeah, but it, it keeps okay. On Val's motion, Abby. Aye. Diane. Aye. Carrie. Aye. Val. Aye. I'm in favor. Oh, there's a pool. All right. <laughs> All right. Next up, Valium. Pavilion. That's you, Matthew. I'm kind of frustrated. What? They just put up the pool application, so if it's okay, we can just review the rest of my hardscape. Whatever. All right. No, that's I just fine. Need, All I just right. So we're going to go to the pool. It's crashing. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it might be too big up. Might be. Um, I have a question. Sorry. Has the house? Good. Sorry. Has the house? Has the house been approved? Yes. Yes. And the garage as well? No. Okay. Thanks. So, uh, so if uh, if you would, if you don't mind, to go to the first page just to see the overall site again. That's the one that doesn't. Thank so, you very much. So we're way down. Just so, to oh. exactly. So we are way all the way to the rear far end of the property. No, I meant I meant on the agenda. Sorry. Okay. Are we? Listen, oh. there, if if you're following along on your little iPads, it's under it's further down on the agenda because we group these all together so they could all be heard together. And we're doing the pool. We're doing the pool. That's okay. correct. Yeah. So the main house was approved. So the pool is tucked behind the main house. With or without the garage, uh, it still will not be visible. Uh, again, the great naturally slopes down. Uh, it's it's uh, just, uh, we are not touching any vegetation along the street, as you can see, that's all undisturbed. Uh, again, there's a, you know, there's a pool deck, lounge deck, and a lounge patio around surrounding the pool. Again, everything is at grade and fully tucked behind the house. So uh, I do believe there is no visibility whatsoever. And once the garage hopefully get approved, uh, that's still just uh, reinforce the screening you gotta look at this really the material nice. again just they get great if they get great with the uh, granite pavers uh patio and if uh, the second page might be zooming into the hardscape itself a little bit more okay <clears throat> everybody got it we're trying yes every time you do <laughs> it disappears I just have one um, question about the grade, Mirka. Yeah, and, my question. Um, it's just from, I think it's Eel Point Road. Is that higher than this? Are you going to yes. be looking no. down? Are you going to be looking Eel down? Point Road high, or no, feel, Swift Rock Road is higher than this. Yeah. Okay. I'm just wondering if from yeah, whatever yeah. that road is to the south, I think that's Eel Point. If you're If that's higher, you might look down on this to a you know, at a distance, but other than that, I don't think it's going to be visible from, you know, anywhere. Yeah, so, 
Um, What's just, up? To, just to clarify, it's a, it's flat, it's leveled. There is just minor grading change to the Swiss throat. Uh, and again, and that part of the ill point, it's highly vegetated. And actually the rear end of that property kind of slopes up as well, uh, the kind of point. So there's actually uh, help just if you are talking about the grading, it's actually buffering this back part of the yard from the ill point. Cool, thank you. All right. <clears throat> Mr. Let's, Chair, we, we have, have a hand. hand raised. Okay, hand raised. Unmute, please. Lisa. Hi, this is Lisa Berger uh, at 27 Eel Point Road. Um, yep. I have a couple of concerns. Uh, one, it is a actually does slope down from Eel Point Road. Um, I live on the. <coughs> um, my concern is a couple of things. One, this pool size is 18 feet by 44 feet. Um, quite frankly, that's the same size pool that the Nantucket Club has. It's a really large pool. Um, I'm also concerned, as my sister said earlier, about all of the patios that they have, um, because in addition to the patio you guys just approved, um, there's a total of 2,124 uh, feet of square feet of patio and decking. That's just a lot. I mean, it's like a hotel. Honestly, it's a hotel on the Swift Rock Road where it's a lot of small houses and it's just too much. <coughs> All of this stuff together. It, it's really like we have Nantucket Hotel behind us and you're gonna hear it and see it from Eel Point Road. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Board members. I'd, I'd like to say I that it's very hard to digest this because- Hang on, Diane, go ahead. Okay. Uh, this thing, that woman is absolutely right. That that pool is too big. It should be a regular resident size, not a hotel size. It's a parking. If you look at the whole thing, and 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 it does give off an, an a feeling of what Swift Rock Road is. This has become practically a city within itself, an eight-car parking space for a, for what? I, I think that the place has gotten too big. I think all the porches, the decks, the parking has to be thought about or what, what it's going to look, the streetscape and the area that it is in is not like this at all. So I think that some of it should be considered to be too big. It maybe you can't see it from the street at the moment, but that doesn't mean that it's not going to continue. It's a large lot, and I'm aware of that, but it still has to fit in, and it's it's got too much outside surrounding area being built. Okay, thank you. All right, thanks, Diane. I think I have Carrie and Val, right? Left. Uh, you went, didn't you? Did Val go? Did oh, actually, Carrie. I'm did still you... trying to look at it. <clears throat> oh, yeah, I can go. Um, <coughs> happy to go. I, I mean, it is a humongous pool for sure, um, 44 feet long with decks surrounding it, but. Again, I don't think it's going to be visible from anywhere. Um, I wouldn't mind taking a drive to Eel Point, but I don't think I'd be able to see which house is which because the house isn't there yet. And, you know, I, I, with the grade, it's really from not from Swift Rock, but from Eel Point. If you're if there's any chance of looking down on it, um, it's pretty exposed. There's a little cabana that's trying to you know, mask that end, but maybe if the cabana were resituated and the pool was reduced a little bit, that might help mask it for sure. Um, but with our caveat, you know, it would have to be invisible. That's it. Thanks. Okay, Carrie, thank you. Does that mean that I have Val and Abby left? No, I just said I'll get it to you No, I don't. I have the right number, and so I'd like to hear from both of you. 
Since our purview is only what can be seen from a public way, we don't really have much to say in terms of, is it too much? That's an opinion. Um, and, you know, I, I, I don't disagree that, you know, we're at a beach community, it should probably be a bit less, but that's not something we can determine. Okay, Val, thank you. Abby? I'm sort of along the same opinion. I, I just have to say it's very hard to look at this. Is there a way that next time when you have such a big project, it could be broken into um, a couple of different, so every time we go to enlarge it and see how it relates to the whole property. Yeah, so that's very, so it's hard to make a, a really <clears throat> firm decision on this, but because it is way in the back, uh, of the property and I you know I don't dare touch this thing but um you know I think I think it's okay we could reduce the the pool and the hardscaping by a couple of feet I think that might help this project not seem so monumental um I guess that would be my opinion so um I'll stick with that thank you okay thank you uh Val you've already spoken right <clears throat> yeah, I don't think that this is going to be, I don't think, I know this is not going to be visible from Eel Point Road because of the intervening lots with their respective houses on them and or from Swift Rock. So I believe that it is um, not visible from a publicly traveled way. So that's mm -hmm. my opinion. Um, <clears throat> okay, what should we do with this, folks? Somebody. Motion to approve as submitted due to lack of visibility with our pool caveat cannot be seen at time of inspection or thereafter in perpetuity and no grade changes from existing without applying to HDC. Right. Okay. Um, <clears throat> that is Val's motion. On Val's motion, Abby. Okay, Carrie. I and I don't know if the minutes taker uh, heard Abby or not, because I didn't. Yeah, I did. Abby's off. No, turn your mic on. Okay. I'm still contemplating. You go, Carrie. Oh, she okay. Did. I already did. I'm good. Diane. Can I abstain? Yeah. Okay. okay. That's All right. Carrie's in favor. Diana's abstained. Oh, I guess. Are you ready, Abby? Yes. Okay. I'll be a no. Um, I, I, I could see this getting uh, a little smaller. You know, the patio and the pool and everything can, you know, get that sort of more condensed. So I'm a no. Okay. And Val? I made a motion. Well, I know. Oh, I just I... have to vote on your motion. <laughs> okay. So I'm in favor. So that means that this motion carries three in favor, one abstention, and one against. Thank you. Okay. Now moving right along. Now let's go to the pavilion with Matthew. <clears throat> Same board. I just wrote pool caveat and yes, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, with your permission, Mr. Yes. Chair, I can start. Yeah, my so permission. This <clears throat> is an application for, <clears throat> sorry, what we're calling a pavilion. Uh, it's basically a, a covered uh, structure with uh, a half bath and a storage space attached to it. Uh, try to keep it a very simple structure. Uh, it is located probably about 400 plus feet from the road, and it's 14 feet tall. Uh, all the dimension, uh, all the details, exterior trim details match the approved main dwelling. That's all I have, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Matthew. Um, Mr. Chair, I have a hand raised. Yes. Does she know to unmute? Yes, I know to unmute. Um, okay. Mr. Chair, this is Lisa Berger again. Um, 
my feelings are the same. You will see this from Mill Point Road. Um, I go up that road every single day. Um, my concern here is that this um, just adds to the square footage of all the other property of all the other things on the property. Um, the pavilion has windows on the back side of it um, that I don't think are necessary if there's storage space that will just let light uh, onto Eel Point Road. I wish that those windows weren't there back on the south elevation, if you go down. Um, in addition to that, in the drawing um, of the pool area, they talked about putting the pool equipment on the back side of that pavilion. And I have issue with that because that'll just add noise to the neighbors. Um, so those are my comments, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you, Lisa. Board members, same board. I'll go. Yes. I appreciate that it's short in stature, but I, I do think it's a little excessive with a 20 by 20 porch on a 10 foot wide building. I, I mean, if there was gonna be some way to cut something back, this seems like the place that it could happen and not hurt anything. Just, it's just a lot all on one lot. Yeah. Okay. Val, thank you. Who's next? I can go right after oh, Val because I agree with what Val said. Okay, very good, Abby. Thank you. Diane, Carrie? I'll, I'll go after Abby because I agree also. Okay, Carrie? Um, yeah, my thing is more about the way it looks with the proportions of open to closed and the chimney and, you know, I think... The south, is that facing uh, Eel Point Road? Yes, technically. Because yes. that's the simplest, most um, sort of appropriate kind of elevation in my mind, the rest of them. But if we're not going to see them, I don't know. I, I do think out of neighborliness, you could figure out a better place to put the pool equipment. Um, you know, you've got all these buildings and you you know you should at least consider that for their sake that's it thanks okay thanks um i agree that, that uh the porch with respect to the enclosed portion of this is i think double so that needs to be pared back um that's all i have to say um should we hold this for revisions Yes, I hold for a vision. All right, that's Diane's motion. On Diane's motion, Val. Aye. Abby. Aye. Carrie. Aye. Diane. Aye. And I'm in favor. Thank okay, you. so finally we're going to review now the garage. Mr. Chair. Yes. This um, garage, you were copied on some emails today about the fact that the uh, butters notice that we received originally was, I guess, with the main house. And, and include it. So basically, long story short, um, there was not a separate abutters notification for this particular structure, and it, it should have received it. We um, received copies of it today. So it went out. Um, leaving it to you all. Wait, so the abutters weren't given proper notice, or they were given proper notice, but not in the proper time frame. Is that what I understand? I think they were notified as they were notified with the main house back in November. Uh, that notification is still good because it's within the six months. Yes, um, it said specifically for the new dwelling and garage. Okay. My understanding plans weren't a lot, weren't they, their intention was to submit both of them, they only submitted the, the house, house and the demo of the existing garage. Come up to March right now. We received the application, but they never the the they should have it should have had its own abutters notification in its own right, yes. because it meets the thousand square foot requirement under right. the bylaw. So, um, I brought that to um, Matt's office attention today, um, after I it was brought to my attention. Basically, the abutters that are here this evening never received a natural notice for this particular application. <clears throat> That's the intent. I mean, if I could, so we did notify them. Uh, the abutter notification said uh, new dwelling and garage. And then we held on the garage because we made so many changes to the main house. We want to get the main house approved 
so they were notified that a garage was you know coming um we just waited until now because we had just gotten the main house approved so tech they were notified and they're on, <coughs> on this they're they're here tonight yeah why don't we just ask them if they got it well we okay there there there's an additional complication let's let's go down a hypothetical road here just for a moment that there's a third person who we have not yet heard from and they just got their notification now well, Mr. technically, they, they got their notification that there was a garage coming in like months ago. Mr. Chair, months ago. who's this talking? Lisa Berger, can I speak? Not yet. Not yet. Um, you know, honestly, I'll, whatever the discretion of the board, I'll go along with, but we did. Yeah, I'm them. trying to parse this whole thing about. Like if you're given notification about something like six months, you know, again, taking an extreme case. Oh, well, in the next six months, you will, you'll be seeing something on the garage. Well, the reason you kind of notice it is because you say on this particular day, this will be heard. And as, as from what I understand, that's not what happened. It's like we heard the house, but the garage was not yet ready. Mm -hmm. So I think I think just to be uh, to err on the side of caution, I really think that we should hold this uh, so that that can't be, you know, ammunition to say, oh, well, we weren't given proper notification. That's fine. I think that's just the wise thing to do all around. Okay, so that is the story on that. We will not hear the garage, given the, you know, the um, <clears throat> little sort of snafu that, that happened with a butter notification. So do we have to make a motion for that? No. We don't? No, um, we're just going to hold it until it's, until, until it's got proper notification, then it will reappear on that. Okay, and when it reappears, can we have the other structures on the site as well to compare? Um, we did this when you made the big house next to the house that's there sure understood yeah and, and i do think it's relevant val because we did intentionally design the garage to play nicely if you will with the existing uh, okay. guest house so so we all that. understand what needs to be done correct yeah. all right so that now concludes the old business Thank portion you. 312 now is the, no i'm sorry i said that wrong i said that wrong it concludes the old business of three five. Now we're going to the oh wow, the new business of three five. We're going to the old business of three twelve. This is because I have pizza on the mind because I think I think it's actually back there, right? Okay, so we're going to take uh, we're, we'll we'll resume this at six o'clock. It's it's uh, five fifty one right now. Thank you.
Altarum is a clinically proven arthritis pain relief gel which penetrates deep to target the source of pain with non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medicine directly at the source. Altarum, the joy of movement. Make the traveling trio, each helping to protect the running with chase. Tools that help protect. Tools that help check. One vein that puts you in control. Make more of what's yours. With a freestyle Libre 3 system, know your Google. Point. Yeah. We also, Holly. 
Okay. Uh, who's representing this? Looks like your eye. Right here. Well, that's your eyes. Yeah. All right, your eye. Your uh, board is myself, yep. Abby, I'm, Diane, I'm here, Val, yeah. and Joe. Okay. Um, so this is the, the application for the beach stairs, which I already presented that earlier, and you were asking for more additional photos from from the beach of some uh, some other stairs as a as an example, or just see how it looks uh, in the other you know the other stairs around. So I added those, and also I added the the concom approval and Bracken's plan, which is showing the the topography and the stairs. Okay. So okay. That's that's all. All right. Does anyone have any questions? We don't have Abby yet. And we don't have Abby yet. I don't yet. think so. No questions. All right. How about comments? Who'd like to begin? Um, it's natural to weather wood, correct? Yes. Yeah. I, I think it looks like the other ones that are there and they have to have it elevated to keep the integrity of what's beneath it. So that's a con con thing. I'm okay with this. Okay. Uh, let's see. Joe. Yeah, I'm in agreement with Val. In fact, I, I had something very similar approved at 119 Eel Point Road. And if the CONCOM has blessed this construction, um, I feel like it's appropriate. Okay. Diane? Yes, yes. It's uh, keeping it open down below. It is very typical of the stairs we've been agreeing to for a long time. So I, I'm fine with it. Okay, and I don't see Abby yet, but um, how about a motion? Motion to approve. On your motion. Aye. Val. Joe? Aye. Diane? Um, I'm an aye. Diane's gone. All right, well, we've got a majority, we've got a quorum and a majority approval, so we'll Thank register you. a vote later. Fair enough. Okay, back to you, Mr. Chair. All right. Do we have Chip? Yes, good evening. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, but what I can't do is I can't open your file okay. So I, th I, I think you're still sending those files that are too big. Well, I can, I can share the screen um, uh, because we, what you have, we had some additional information. I want to thank Holly very much for helping us uh, and add a lot of historic information. So if I can share the screen, I can walk everyone through it. All right. Hey, Chip, if you can um, make sure we have that one on file, what you're going to share, um, email. Yeah, yeah, we, we did send it and we can, uh, uh, we'd like prints as well. Thank you. Yes, please. please. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. But before oh. you start, Chip, just yeah. want to identify the board. Myself, Abby, who is en route, Diane, Val, Carey. Go ahead. Shall I start? Yeah. Okay, uh, Chip Webster, on behalf of the applicant, this is an application for a proposed uh, dormer revision on uh, Commercial Street. Um, this is, was before you once before, uh, we didn't realize that it was an historic building. Again, I thank you very much, Holly, for helping us uh, enormously in locating, uh, actually providing a, a lot of additional information. So, um, and also we have some proposed revision. So if I can walk through this, these are, I won't spend too much on this. These are Sanborn maps going back to, I believe, uh, 1898 or so, all showing the footprint of the building. Uh, then we get past all these. Uh, we have some additional information here. So this is part of the historic survey. And this is really interesting, actually. Um, 
if you look the rear of the building, which is the upper photograph, has changed relatively little since then, other than changing the railing system to a more contemporary vertical uh, balustrade system. The front of the building, however, had a center flush gable dormer that was subsequently removed. The two shed dormers that are showing in this photograph um, are still remain. The fenestration was also, also largely changed in a re renovation that happened, I believe, in the early 70s. Uh, I think that's when uh, the dormer was removed and other ch changes to the front of the building were made. Um, here's the uh, inventory form. Again, that uh, a version of that same photograph. Um, all this is now in the application. And then scrolling through this, a series of other photos. Um, uh, many of these are distant photos, but they're now part of the record. Uh, I'll just kind of go through these quickly because they don't provide much additional information other than the historical presence of the building. The last one, which is about to come up from 1968, let me just get to that one here. Okay, so this is the building in 1968, and then this is a blow up of that same photo. So you can see in 1968, that front uh, flush gable dormer was uh, was still there. And again, I think it was the early 70s when it was removed. This is the way the building looks now. Um, this is part of what threw us off is because when we looked here, it said it was built in 1970. And Holly, let us know that do not trust uh, the assessor's information. Um, but you can see there are also a number of other uh, changes that were made to the building uh, uh, during that time. Most notably, there are some first floor elements that were added, a center porch, as well as some bays with a continuous shed roof tying all those together. Also, the uh, widow's walk was at has it was added at some point between 19, 1968 and now. So I think it's it, one thing is fair to say is that the building has changed uh, quite a bit over time, sort of an iterative process, starting with a center gable dormer, and then the center gable dormer plus shed dormers, and then removing the center gable dormer, keeping the shed dormers. And then as you can see here, the fenestration and that first floor massing is uh, dramatically different from the original building. Um, this also, when we were, uh, when I was in the building, crawling around, trying to find some evidence of original construction, these are photographs of what I did find. So this is the back of a closet that um, shows obviously new framing and icing and so forth. This is a photo beneath the structure, which it looks like virtually all the framing was replaced with PT. Oh, I'm sorry, let me, I'm gonna come out a little bit here. Okay, and then uh, last but not least on the left-hand side, this is uh, in the area where we're proposing the uh, dormer revision. And you can see it's all new uh, rafters that were in that area. Okay, so now, Site plan, locus plan, existing photos, and we get to our current proposal. This uh, in the upper left is uh, existing. Right next to that to the right was our initial proposal where we were proposing changing the shed dormers to gable dormers and connecting that with a recessed shed dormer that was uh, which was inspired by what's on the other side of the building which is on the to the right of that. And then beneath that with the red cloud is what we're proposing now, which is uh, keeping the existing shed dormers and simply connecting with a recessed uh, shed element, connecting those back to get a little light and ventilation into that space. Uh, thank you very much. I turn it over to the board for questions and comments. Thank you. Okay, Chip, thanks, uh, Holly. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. So yes, um, for the record, this definitely is not a 
1970s structure. It is Crow's Nest. That's the name that's been given to it. Um, it was part of Sherburn Associates Harborview building. It is contributing. Um, and before that, uh, we've got photographic evidence of it being around um, all the way up to the 1880s. Um, so uh, great resource at the NHA. And I'm glad that um, Chip has provided that in your application. Um, the proposed changes to the existing dormer um, is mostly on the harbor side um, and obviously on um, on the north. Um, and although that these these dormers are atypical, um, you know they're they're dormers flanked by two smaller gable dormers on the same plane, giving that appearance of a shed gable dormer. The proposed um, or, or the existing actually is is appropriate. Um, the gable dormers obviously need to conform with building with Nantucket in mind. Um, I think it's safe to say that this structure has had um, multitude of revisions um, over time prior to even building with Nantucket in mind of dormers. So it is historically appropriate to have dormers on. Um, it would maybe be nice to um, have a nod to what was there back in the uh, 1930s, all, as far as way, all the way up to 1968. Uh, when Beinecke um, took this structure over, um, I'm just, uh, you know, this would be nice to um, bring a bring it back. I do I do think that the proposed on the uh, north elevation doesn't necessarily give um, homage back to its original appearance, um, but I will say based on the photographic evidence, there have been a lot of different fenestrations, especially on the gable ends. I know that's not part of this application, but um, just to point that out that it hasn't had that typical, typical Nantucket uh, fenestration. So those are my comments, Mr. Chair. Holly, thank you. Mickey. Yes, so this building dates back to at least the 1880s. Um, the proposed front dormer does not meet uh, building with Nant Nantucket in mind guidelines, which states dormer design and placement should not destroy the simplicity of the front of the roof plane of Nantucket buildings, which is an important aspect of the character of its architecture. Shed dormers, particularly trunk or full ones, which cover the main roof plane are neither appropriate nor desirable. So the, you know, the, the front is different than the back. Th things are permitted on the back, which you would certainly not want on the front of any building facing the street. Um, and the presence of an of an earlier um, small gable dormer on the front of the building that's been removed really shouldn't have any bearing on this. That was um, a short-term appendage. It's been removed and the building now has more appropriate facade. And I don't think that should change. Thank you. Okay, Mickey, thank you. Um, now, I will note that Abby still is not with us, so we are down to a four-person board, so we'll see how that goes. Myself, Diane, Val, and Carrie, who would like to begin? <clears throat> yes. I'll go. Thank you. Carrie. Um, while I think it's it was a good solution to getting light up there. I think the rear, you already have a ton of light up there. And I do think keeping the front facade as it is, is a good thing simply because it has been changed from the historic, I think for the better, having seen the historic photograph, I don't think that gable in the center is a, is a great thing to bring back. Um, but I think, um, yeah, I just think, leaving it as is, is great. It, if this were on the back, I'd say, yeah, go for it, but it's on the front. So I think I'm sticking with the Holly and Mickey. Thank you. Okay. Carrie, thank you. Diane, Val. Speaker. Yeah, yeah. I said I was trying to find the historic pictures, but I can't get the thing to stay on the computer. Uh, I need a uh, minute. Through, through the chair, uh, would, would you like me to scroll back for Val to see those on, on, on here? 
Uh, that would be great. But, you know, the underlying point is your, your files continue to be too large for us to be able to navigate. I can't touch mine. Um, in the meantime, should we go Make to it. Diane? Okay. Diane's gone? Yeah. Diane's gone. Well, then we're down to a three-person oh, board. Abby's back. Yeah, but Abby, okay. Look. Oh, man. Abby did not participate in the whole discussion. No. We got a problem if Diane's not here and Abby just walked in. I, no, I, I didn't. feel like. Yeah. Abby, you just got here. Like. Yeah. Got, yeah. Diane's on. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Sorry, Mr. Well, uh, do you want me to go? Yeah, okay. So you're going to get to listen to Val and me, but I think you're going to have to have those two people mulling in because this ain't going to go anywhere with three people. Go ahead. Well, let's, um, let's, let's, let's proceed and we'll figure it out. Thank you. Wow. Okay, so based on these pictures, um, I think it's been pretty consistently two shed dormers there for quite some time now. So I'd prefer to see the front stay simple. And um, that's the only that's thing we're looking at, right? Yeah, that's it. Okay. Okay, Val, thank you. I feel the same way. Uh, you know, the gable dormer, I, I think Carrie said that it was an improvement getting rid of it, which I would agree to. But, uh, you know, even just restoring it to the gable dormer at least would have a historical, excuse me, precedent, uh, whereas what you're doing now doesn't. Well, we also have to consider a roof walk, which wasn't on the historic building. Oh, and that yeah. adds some well, complexity good, to it Good point. Okay. Well. All right. So I think we should move so, for re revisions on this guy um, so, with our three uh, Real quick, uh, Mr. What? Chair, can I ask a quick question? Because I was going to ask if exploring bringing that gable dormer back would be a, 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 a direction to pursue, but it's sounding well, like maybe not. No, I, I think that, you know, um, my own view is that of all the solutions where you're adding something, the one that had historical precedent would be the one that would be the most viable. Uh, I'm not sure that that's going to gain any kind of momentum with the remaining board members. So, so I would, I, I would like to uh, um, get close to a microphone, Val, because I'm looking for a motion. Carrie, can you make the motion? Oh yeah, but I would just. Oh, motion to hold for revisions. Um, yeah. But I would suggest that that flush gable dormer is not a revision to come back to us. It's not attractive. Okay, it. so there, there you heard it. <laughs> okay. Know. There you heard it, Chip. Okay, but the motion is for revisions uh, on that motion, Val. Aye. Carrie? Aye. And I'm in favor. All right, so that's that. Now you have something at... Um, 30 Russell's yep. way. <clears throat> Correct. And uh, again, if I can share the screen, I will present that. Um, okay. Now, is Diane still gone? There, Diane. She's coming in right now. <clears throat> okay, this one is myself, okay. Stephen, Abby, Diane, Val. Okay. Um, and there we go here. All righty. Uh, let me know if this comes up okay. I'm sorry, uh, Ray, who was that again? That's sitting? Myself, Stephen, yep. Abby, Diane, Val. Okay. And Diane is back? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what happened. The whole thing just wiped out. I okay, had to Chip, go ahead. Okay, good evening, everyone. Chip Webster on behalf of the applicant for a proposed uh, new dwelling at 30 Russells. Um, at the last meeting, uh, we were pretty close. I almost thought we were going to get a staff approval, but there were three 
remaining requests of the board and the board wanted to see them before uh, moving forward with that. So the first one, which shows on the site plan was re uh, eliminating any grade change whatsoever at, at that location. We had previously wanted to flatten a little bit, but uh, now we are eliminating that. And you can see it'll have a slope uh, that's from the existing grade uh, from one side to the other of about of 18 inches or so. This uh, next sheet has the registered uh, survey, uh, certified survey so as part of the application, as well as the locus map. And all three of those site plans confirm uh, the same topography. So that was item number one. Item number two was a concern on the size of the chimney. Um, so we reduced the chimney by another foot in width. It, uh, so we, it, we are now proposing a chimney that's two feet uh, less wide than the original one. It's also brought down about 18 inches. You can see in the middle where the red cloud is, there's a light red dotted line that had where it was before. So uh, chimney is substantially smaller. I'd also like to point out on this, which is the north front elevation, the other changes that we made through the process with the board, most most notably bringing down the overall height, uh, breaking the house into uh, separate masses, uh, uh, such that there's a secondary mass that is shorter and set back, and then breaking up uh, uh, gang windows on this side. I uh, so just wanted to point out some of those uh, design elements that uh, through the process with the board we have implemented. Uh, the third request was around the second floor decks and the uh, uh, the length of them. Uh, so we did two things there. One, we reduced the height of the rail, which uh, helps mitigate the presence. But then you can see we also uh, broke it into... Uh, smaller sections. So where we had, you can see in the upper two drawings previously, had a second floor proposed uh, deck integrated into that roof that went all the way across. We've now broken that uh, into two sections. Um, and then on the this side, uh, I guess the same changes that we talked about are slightly reflected here, but I just also want to point out this uh, porch element that had been added through the design uh, iteration process from the original design that helps that side. And last but not least, we have the Western side, which again shows the reduction in height, the uh, no change in grade, the smaller chimney, and then the breaking of the decks on this side on the second floor into two sections. Um, so with that, I turn it over to the board for questions and comments. And I'll bring us back to the front. Thank you. Okay. Who wants to begin? <clears throat> Thank you. I appreciate, Chip, a lot of the changes you made. Thank you very much. I, I think it's made the house look much more handsome. Uh, I still think the chimney is too big, and I'm wondering why you want it. It, it doesn't even have an inside fireplace hmm. um so yeah i i think that could go down to if you look at the side elevations something like that's on the side if you want to keep it for the look um yeah and i appreciate breaking the decks up i still think they're wide but um that i think is successful the way you accomplish that and uh, the overall height reduction is great. So thank you. Thank you for working with us. Well, thank you. I, I, uh, real quick. That's I, it. I agree thank that you. we thank you. the design. Thanks. Hey, thanks. OK, so next <laughs> person other than Chip to speak. Thank you. I'll go. Thank you. Me, do you want me to go? Yes, please. OK. I. I do appreciate everything you've done. I think it makes a great difference, except that I do like the chimney. I think that it uh, pulls the house together and, and makes it look like what it has been designed to look like. 
Other than that, I don't have any any major things. I think that you've corrected everything we brought up, and I thank you. That's it. Okay, okay Diane, thank you. Abby, Carey. Abby can go um, if you're ready for me. Abby, we're ready. Okay. Um, I, I think that the front door sort of portico there um, is adding to that rocket ship effect of that main mast. And I think if that were a shed, farmer's porch front, it would it would sort of cut down on that um, arrow pointing thing. Um, and I too appreciate the chimney, um, but uh, yeah, I, I mean, I'm not I'm not sure about the chimney. Um, maybe the chimney. It's so central. It's sort of adding to that. What everybody, everything seems to be pointing at. But um. Anyway, those are my thoughts. Everything else, okay. Okay, okay. thank you, Stephen. Uh, I'm good with this, as is. I appreciate the changes. Okay. So I'm going to bring one thing up because it was has was and remains my largest concern on this. I didn't like the fact that you were grading up. You changed that, but you kept the height of the building net net the same. In other words, when you first came in with your foot and a half of grade change, you were requesting a building that was 28 feet, four inches high. Now you're not doing the grade change, but now the building is 29 feet and a half high. So what you're doing is you didn't berm up the grade. You just kept the building the same height and don't have the grade. So given that, you know, I, I was trying to get the building down, not to keep I'm, the building I, the same I too height. am concerned. What? I too am so, concerned about the height. And that's why I was trying to make a reduction. Yeah, when I asked for a grade change, when I asked for no mounding, I figured the building was going to come down and remain 28.4 rather than so, increase in height. Mr. Chair, if I, I might add, do you see the red dotted line here? That was our original submission height. So it has it has come down approximately 18 inches from the original submission. You know, for, as far as absolute height relative to sea level. <laughs> well, that's what I'm talking about. So I, I guess I'm just not understanding. Okay. Because you're, you're 29.6. So before you would have been to uh, quote Val, over zoning. 30 feet. You know, if you came down a foot and a half, and you're, you came down a foot and a half to 29.6, that means your building would have been 31 feet high. Well, the, I mean, uh, without getting too technical, since we were no, I, I want to get technical, uh, Chip. Okay. Okay. So that's technical right. is what this conversation Chip, is about. I'm, Chip, I'm sorry. Okay, I have okay. to so Chip, when you add, when Chip, you add, hold on a sec, Chip, I got to yeah, interrupt. Go that yeah. might be the quote of the year. What? Without getting too technical. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Go ahead. All right. Uh, um, as I, I believe, you know, when you raise the grade, it raises the starting point, you know, because it, the average grade is between the existing others. So, we were we were meeting zoning. We were checking that throughout. That being said, I mean we could, if 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 if, if it pleasures the board, we could bring this down another six inches and just figure out how to do it. Well, so you'd also, be twenty nine feet high. Yeah. Yes. Correct. And then I would also offer, if again it pleasure it would be the pleasure of the board to uh, make the chimney even smaller. I think it was suggested that maybe it should just be square. Personally, I think it's, I, I I think it's appropriate for the scale. But I would we would be happy to make that smaller, such that the the side that you're seeing here matched the this side here. So it's just a simple square. Okay, there's what Chiff's offering up. Uh, what do you guys think of that? Abby has her hand raised. Yes, Abby. Uh, so oh, my um, comments were because I'm. This is perceived as a very tall building. It's not just tall; it looks tall, and I think it's got to come down at least another foot. 
um, which I mean, I'd like to see it no higher than 28 because uh, I mean, that's it's it's sort of looming. So I, I would like to see that height reduced. Okay. Um, can I? Yeah, go ahead, Stephen. Chip, can you explain? Uh, I don't see a cross section of the structure. Can you explain what's going on? We're looking at this elevation, and there's a considerable. It looks like amount of shingles. Yeah. It looks like the first floor windows are very high. Let me put it that mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is lending to this perception of height because not only is it tall, it's making it look taller. Right. So if I may, uh, through the chair, answer your question, that would be how we would lower it. We would take it from the bottom if, if we were lowered six inches so that that shingle course that you're referring to would go up and then that space between the bottom of the shingles and those first four windows would be reduced. Uh, Chip, I kind of would like you to get technical and answer that question, though. Oh, I'm sorry. Like, what's going on there that those windows are so high? No, no, it's okay. Uh, if you look at the threshold, look at the porch. So the porch is is at the first floor level. So that's what I'm saying. So we have, uh, as, as Ray pointed out, we dropped the grade, but that we added like a step or something there. So I'm suggesting, so that's what, in answer to your question, Stephen, I'm sorry. The first floor level is at the, at, at that, uh, where the door is. Does that make sense? So we, we've got, we've got a couple, we've got uh, four risers coming up to that. So we could lower it by reducing, pulling the whole thing down. And then that shingle course would come up. Am I answering your question? Yeah, I think I think I'd like I think the appropriate way to address that would be to have no more than two risers overall. Correct. Because this isn't just an atypical presentation. That the basically the top the top of the foundation wall is so high out of the ground that you that you're extending the shingles down to mask that presentation, which would have been the short answer. And I think, you know, basically you need to push that back down into the ground and um, that will address the exposed number of shingle courses and you will, in, in addition, decrease the number of steps. Got it. So just run the math, if we have two risers, well, we need, we need about 22 inches from grade to finish floor just for the framing and uh everything so that would be be three risers uh but it could be two to the porch and then just one to get into the house Correct. and there'd be about seven and a half inches each that's right but are we comfortable with abby yes abby yes i'm right here Am, yes. I, am I comfortable with 21 inches? Is that the uh, Well, no. I mean, I don't know. Are we are we trying to approve this through staff or are we looking for this the drawings to literally get revised? I think we're I'd like to I, see it revised. Yeah, I, you got three people. You have three people who want to see revised drawings to see how this is all going to be affected. Okay. So I think we should move for revisions just to hustle. That's, that's my motion, Mr. Yes. Chair. And and Abby, if you could add a section. And a section, please. Section through the building. Okay. So that was Abby's motion, revisions, including a section. On that motion, Stephen. Aye. Um Val. Aye. Uh Abby. Aye. Diane. Aye. And I'm in favor. Okay, so there's that. Okay. Thank you very okay. kindly. Everyone have a good evening. Thanks. Night, night. Um, Thanks, next, 
Next up, we got uh, five crows nests, and that's you, Stephen. Cherry. Okay, so Robbie, good evening. Robbie, We've hello. got um, your board is myself, Abby, Diane, Diane's back, Carrie, and uh, Connie. No alternates. And why don't we see what you got? Okay, good to go. Nope. All right, so um, this was first reviewed several months ago, and it was held for um, basically minor revisions. Um, however, in the in the meantime, uh, the revisions included changing. If we could, can we pull that drawings up, please? Yeah. Okay, if he, could you zoom in on that, Holly, at all? A little bit? No? Which uh, portion, Robbie? I'm, I'm sorry, Steve? Zoom in on which portion? Uh, the, the, right there where her cursor is, it's the lower portion. So our, our original building proposal was where the, uh, the garage is located between the 100 and the 50 foot buffer zone. We added coke. Okay, so up, up near the top, where the where the where the smaller building is by the red arrow in the center of the center of the drawing that was our original building location now because the soil condition was was found to be uh, not conducive for for changing the septic system um, and because of the proposed change from 50 to 75 foot buffer to the uh, to the coastal dune from the concom we decided to move the structure uh, closer to the street, which is the um, the roof plan shown closest to Stephen in the site plan drawing. Okay, um, as part of the initial review, um, it was requested that the fenestration to the uh, original cottage, which is, which is up to the north there, of course, uh, that the fenestration and, and those detailings begin to match um, in the in our original application, the owner wanted a clear view window sash and and uh, without any muttons and so forth. Um, and in discussing from our from our suggestions of our first review, they thought it best to change out the windows in the in the in the original cottage, which we have permission to do. I think we changed them to a two over one, no to a two over two. Okay, which we now are reflecting in our new um, fenestration proposal. Okay, um, the other main um, request was that our in our original design, which if we can go to sheet number four, please, Holly. No, we keep scrolling down. Down, yeah, right there. You can see um, on the right-hand drawing, top right-hand drawing, the original proposal was above and the new proposal uh, circled in red is our new presentation. So we've eliminated the, uh, the garage doors completely and of course moved our storage uh, component to that, to that building up closer to the, um, to the main house. The, the the elevations don't seem to match because when we pulled it back towards the street, the cardinal directions changed. So I hope that's not confusing, although it is. It's the same program, essentially the same um, building shape that we had before. However, we changed the windows as requested. We changed the, we got rid of the garage component, as you can see. Um, we lowered the, the lower form on the, or the diminutive form on the left-hand side broke the eave lines, broke the uh, the ridge a little bit more than than um, we had originally, and uh, there was some concern about the the chimney, and I reduced that in scope and then scale, and um, changed the detailing of that a little bit. There was also um, some comments about the original deck, which is in the top left-hand drawing, which came out at the owner's request further than the typical eight feet. 
So that was all changed, modified. The deck was pulled back to the uh, more desirable eight foot dimension, which is all reflected um, in our new design. So um, as part of this, I included a Blackwell survey. If anybody cares to see where the footprint was, was uh, basically dictated where we needed to move. And I think I included the approvals for the changes to the main house and to that uh, garage zoning shed structure. So that's it in a nutshell, and I hope you could follow that okay. I think so. So uh, you moved the location and you rotated it, and then you made some revisions. Indeed. Okay. Not to just to over overly summarize. Okay. Um, okay, so again, it is myself, Abby, Diane, Carrie, and Connie. And Abby, do you have a question or a comment? Your hand's up. <clears throat> and you're muted. Sorry, I'm just kind of new to this. Um, is my hand still up? I have no questions. Okay. Uh, I just have one question before we begin. Robbie, uh, height wise, this is relative to the neighboring homes. What? Yeah, it's 25 feet. And neighboring homes? Oh, there's some that are much larger in that neighborhood. Okay. okay uh, who would like to begin? I'll uh, I can... uh, <laughs> Diane and then Abby. Okay. Uh, on the west elevation, I would say that the uh, one that's circled in red is the one we're looking at, right? Yes. And uh, the front door, front door's got to, I feel, has got to change. It doesn't need all those panels of glass. It should be three panels and then a, and three panes of glass and then a panel. It's too busy, I believe. Mm -hmm. I would like to see that the two windows on the west first floor those two windows together i would like to see them separate so that they went out and covered more there's a lot of sh uh shingles on both sides i would like to see those set apart so it balanced out better with the two above sort of in the middle uh, I, I need to go to another elevation. I only have the west here. Uh, Do you, there. Uh, That's great. That's the east elevation. Uh, will that be visible? No, it faces the ocean. So there's the the ocean sees it, but just the ocean, right? Yes. <laughs> uh, I would still, however, because the ocean's got to be considered a public way, and for I believe, uh, to have kick panels on the bottom, all those French doors are there. It may be the water view, but it's. It is heavy. Perhaps they could be considered three instead of four. You've got two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, two, four, one, two, three, four, five, six. You've got eight windows uh, and eight French windows, and I think that's a lot. So, uh, and I again would separate the bottom two windows all together underneath those things. It it makes those French doors very prominent to me uh, as it is. So I would like to see, I've seen the east and the west. Can I get the north? A lower right, Diane. Ah, right, okay. That's that is the present north. Uh, there must be a reason that you haven't stretched those four windows out across the bottom. I would have to 
see. And the south one? Did we do the south? I can't find my piece of paper. I recorded these. Can you go up on. one? Yeah, yeah there it is. Go. The south. I that's I don't seem to have a problem with the south. So most of it's moving the windows around, and I feel it's moving the windows around and doing the front door. And I was wondering, is there some reason uh, that the chimney can't crumble down closer to the first floor rather than way up there? Yes, there's a, uh, a fireplace on the first floor and one on the second as well. Okay. Okay, Abby. Thank you, Diane. Yeah. All right. Uh, yes. Um, so I agree with Diane about the um, the fenestration. Uh, it's over overly fenestrated with uh, French doors on that east elevation, which is the ocean. But it's just uh, it's too much. I'd like to see that reduced. Um, I think kick panels will. Um, would help that as well. And I think on that west elevation, um, the secondary mass that's off to the left, um, I'd like to see that mirror the main mass more. It just, it looks like an appendage. Um, so yeah, separate those windows and have them relate to the other side. And I do agree about the front door. It seems odd all the way out there that, um, you know, you have, you have a sort of a formal and then a sort of a country door. Uh, it, it's, I think this has this building is having a bit of an identity crisis. You know, am I in the country or am I uh, formal? But um, yeah, that's about it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's see, Connie. Um, yeah, I agree with what's been said. I think. The major concern here is with that east elevation. I know it's facing the water, but I do believe that the eight French doors are not appropriate. Um, and I'm okay with the other elevations, but I do agree maybe separating those windows on the west. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Carrie? Um, yeah, I agree with the west. I think if you just reduce the side lights to three lights instead of all the way down, that would help. Um, and then on the East, I think for me, it's, yes, it's a little bit many doors, but um, it's all the lights. I would like to see six light doors and maybe reduce them instead of four panels to three panels. Um, so the glass proportion is in more proportion with the windows. Um, because it's a really lovely, simple structure. And I think the windows and the doors in that east elevation are what um, just makes it busy, those door, those door lights. Yeah. So. Robbie, what's the, thank you, Carrie. What, what are the colors on this? Is it natural, the weather? It's a uh, white trim, white sash, or uh, yeah, white trim, white sash. And the front door. I don't mind all the lights in the front door. It's just the all the French doors. Uh, quick, uh, doors are oh, the, sa gray. the sash and the doors are Quaker gray. The roof is a uh, red cedar and uh, the trim is white. Okay, yeah. so for me, with that front door, I'm not so concerned about the fenestration itself. I think as white, it's more like, you know, dress slacks. And if it were natural, the weather or Quaker gray, it'd be more like a comfortable pair of chinos. Um, so it'd work out there. The, um, the other thing, just I, I agree with other comments, fenestration. I think you can make some modifications there. I think also you need to rectify so on your south elevation, can we go to the south elevation? The vertex of the shoulders uh, terminate at the house versus into the chimney and on the, uh, as proposed, and on the east and the west, can we go down 
to the next set of elevations. On the east and the west, the vertex of the shoulders terminates into the chimney. So I think there's just a drafting error there, yeah. but I'd want to know which one it is you're proposing because terminating the shoulders into the house is not a typical residential detail. I see that more in a commercial yeah. setting. I'm sorry, I didn't quite follow you. So if you, can you go back up to the south? Okay. The shoulders are terminating into the house there versus into the chimney. Oh yeah, you know, it just looked better in the drawing. I didn't have enough room to, to really get that, that shoulder that <laughs> shoulder to fit well. Okay. Technically speaking. Right, but then <laughs> Tell which that are you want. saying can we go to the next down to the next two? They're different. You want the bottom ones, not the top. Yeah. you you these are showing that. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. You know what I'm yes, saying? Yep. Yep. Okay. One that's going like this back to the house, and it should be going like this. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. So that just Fine. needs to get cleaned up so we know what sure. we're looking at. Sure. Um, it sounds like we're not doing an exhibit A, Robbie, and um, I think uh, a motion for revisions would be in order. Okay, great. Thank you. And do we have a motion? I'd make the motion. <laughs> okay. Um, Diane, yes. on your motion? Aye. Connie? Aye. On your second? Uh, Carrie? Aye. Abby? I'm an I. Abby? Abby going once. Abby going twice. She's muted. Let the record reflect Abby is here, but we can't hear her. Um, we're going to move on to the next one. There you okay. go. Thank you. Okay. Matthew, you're up. Aye. Okay. There it is. Hey. Whoa. Um, okay. 17 North Water. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So this is an application for a roof walk. You've looked at this uh, twice before. Yep. Uh, hopefully we've got it where the board wants it. We reduced the overall width to uh, nine foot six, and we shifted the face of the uh, uh, roof walk back so that the legs uh, mimic almost identically what the historic roof walk looked like uh, in its original incarnation. That's all I have, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Holly. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So for the record, this is a circa 1812 typical Nantucket, um, formerly the Eastern East, Easton Street House, uh, guest house, excuse me, owned by uh, Cyril and uh, Judith Ross for many years. Uh, appreciate the revisions um, and going off of the historic photo from the 1930s. I do think if if, if the commission is so inclined to have this, which I think from the last discussion it was to have the, the uh, roof walk trying to mimic as much as possible of the historic photograph, that it's a little wide um, and it could be shrunk, but I do think the um, the proposed how it looks face um, on North Water Street um, looks proportionately appropriate. So those are my comments. Thank you, Holly. Thank you, Mr. Rowland. Yes. Um, so this roof walk should follow the example um, set by the earlier one shown in the early photo. The photo. Um, it should be three bays wide and one bay deep, um, which he's got three bays wide, but it's, he's got a wider roof walk of two bays, <clears throat> two bays wide or deep. Um, he's also showing us an asymmetrical roof walk. The depth of the roof walk should be no, should be the standard seven or eight foot depth and should absolutely be symmetrical to the ridge. An asymmetrical roof walk would be completely out of character to a house of this age. Early, early roof walks were utilitarian in nature designed for one or two people to access the roof. They were never meant to be used by a large group of people. Thank you. Mickey, <clears throat> excuse me, thank you. So the board, just so that you're all aware, myself, Stephen, Abby, Diane, Kerry. <clears throat> Do we have some drawings? Oh. Diane, you and your unreasonable requests. <laughs> a one or two. You actually want to see it. Yes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> hey, the old, uh, Di Wal the old yeah. Diane does. <laughs> I, I, I just got to ask this question, okay? So 
to Mickey's point, and I I know that this was brought up about having the thing not sit symmetrically on the ridge. Well, the problem before memory serves me was that the posts were getting in the way of where the dormers were because it was so long. But now that you've made the walk narrower, it looks to me like maybe you would be able to get it symmetrical and the post would work. I think that's Am I no. Uh, we actually sized them uh, so that they would uh, mimic as closely the historic uh, picture. But I think to your right. point, I, you I did... don't think anyone on the board wanted them to look too long yeah. on the front. But back <laughs> then, your walk was deeper, much, much, and deeper. that was part of the issue. So, deeper. how wide is it now? Nine foot six. Nine six. All right. Well, I just I'm just pointing it out because I think that you're kind of able to get it symmetrical we could certainly could oh yeah like eight, no, well, they were very short in the earlier one yeah yeah they were short I, they I would, were yeah through you mr chair i would suggest that it was abnormally short originally i okay. think it was very Welcome narrow just that um sorry was that you carrie yes yeah, sorry i think the roof walk originally was very narrow I don't think it was for lots of people to go up there. I think it was narrow because one or two people might go up there. But right. in today's world, lots of people want to go up. So it wants to be a little wider. Right. I agree with that. I don't, I, I don't think it was a very, yeah, significant roof walk. All right. So uh, I'll go. Wait a second. I'm not sure Carrie's finished. So, Carrie, well, what you just said was an observation about the existing roof walk. What what are, what are your feelings about the current proposal? Okay, yeah, it was an observation about the historic roof walk. I think right. the current proposal still reads a little long. I'm not sure. I'm not sure about front to back, like not centered on the ridge. Are we going to see that? Um, are we going to see that fact? I don't know. I don't, through you, Mr. Chair, I don't think it's going to be highly visible from uh, the rear. But again, we're happy to center it. And I think that it would still clear the dormers. And as far as the length, um, again, we're basing it on what the historic photograph indicated. Okay. All right. So, Matthew, okay. I want to make sure that Carrie set her piece. Carrie, uh, I did. I did. I just thought it was. I just didn't think it was as long um, in the historic photo. But I don't see the historic photo now. So yeah. yeah unfortunately, you don't have the the benefit of having <clears throat> the piece of paper that I'm holding in my hand. I don't yeah. think. Uh, but but I think the memory. Forgetting somewhere. If we could just reduce the length a little bit, I think it would be. Right. Okay. Um. All right. Thank you, Carrie. Who's next? I'll go. Thanks. Steve. So Matt, I, I think, yeah, you've reduced the width, the depth front to back, and that's, a, you know, that would allow you to shift the overall mass towards the front without interfering with the dormers. Uh, it, it is still longer than the original uh, build. And I think it needs to come in at least a foot and a half should come in almost to the ridges of those doghouse dormers. That's fine. Um, I believe to be appropriate. And I think it could shift forward, you know, the better part of a foot. And yeah. I think the rest of it being off center isn't going to show. It's not going to be a visible element. And uh, you did decrease the the depth again, front to back. So I'm not, you know, <laughs> historically they used to use chimneys to burn wood. Now we put up faux chimneys. I know yeah, all the time. Like, I just, I'm not as hung up on that. Um, I heard the original owner was not very social either. That's, I think so that's they why had it's a very so narrow. thin roof walk. <laughs> trying to encourage people not to <laughs> they go They really up need people. Just they for just himself. wanted to go up there and flaunt they had one. I, I think that's right. Um, no, I, I'm, I mean, you know, I'm joking around, but it, this is serious stuff. It, it's, you know, it's historical and we want it to, to track and to look appropriate. So I think the width needs to come in and you can shift that forward. So happy to do that. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, Abby, Diane. 
Yeah, let me go while I uh, can uh, talk. Um, I, I think, yes, I agree. It should be not as long as in length, and it should be symmetric on the eave, on either side. That's it. Thanks. All right. Uh, Diane. <clears throat> That's me, too. You mean you feel the same way? Yes. Okay. Uh, sounds like we, uh, and um, my view, uh, Matthew, is that if you accommodate the other members, you've by default accommodated me. Um, um, can I try an exhibit A to me? Uh, this? Yeah. We, this, yeah. I'm four Please. times on this roof. Yeah, I know. It's going to be too much. Yeah. Um, I agree. And the exhibit A would be to move the roof walk towards the street uh, a minimum of a foot and as much as possible without interfering with the ridge, the doghouse ridge. Ridges. Oh, yeah, the ridges of the dormers. And to decrease the width by on each side uh, approximately 18 inches to uh, either above or just past the ridges okay in other words a total reduction in the length of the roof walk of three feet approximately okay through staff uh exhibit a okay does everybody understand exhibit a exhibit a is going to be reducing pulling in the roof walk length by three feet total 18 inches on either side and by moving the roof wall closer to the road so that it is more centered on the ridge. Okay, that is Stephen's motion. Let's see how that does. Carrie, on the motion. Um, I, I just want to make sure it doesn't go too far back, but, you know, with, I, I think you should put a number on it in terms of the width of it. The length of it has to do with the way it looks with the dormers, but I think you need to put a, um, a dimension a, on the width of it. it. I think we said a foot, right? A um, foot. Well, just I mean, in terms of a maximum width. So we're so in the end, if we can see it, we don't have ten foot long legs on the back. Yeah. Well, uh, Carrie, I wasn't going to change the width because when he moves it a foot to a foot and a half forward, right? It's but what decrease. is that width now? Uh, let me no. finish, please. Yeah, please. <laughs> can we go to back to the drawing? Can we go to the drawing that shows the rear? That is going to carry that'll decrease that height of the post, obviously, as you're aware, by the amount they're increased at the front. <coughs> right. Which, I understand that. What I'm so, what I'm concerned about is that it gets wider again and the post stays. No, the no, 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 yeah, no, it shifts I'm, on the ridge. Yeah, the, we're, we're not I'm saying it would be good to have an actual number. Nine, six. It's it's gonna okay. Let me just please be clear. I am not proposing that the depth of the roof walk change. from the front to the back change. What the motion is is to I shift. Understand. I understand. But but Carrie, it's a scale drawing. Gonna, hey Carrie, do you mind if I go to some other somebody else first? Here, yeah, so on, on the motion, on the motion, Abby. I, I'm. I was an I. Okay, Diane. Aye. Great. Carrie. Aye. All right. Thank you, Stephen. Aye. And I'm in favor. All right. So that was an exhibit A. We all know that through staff. Thank you. Okay. Very much. Um 156 Madicate pickleball court and driveway is uh Lindsay around or somebody? Okay, Lindsay, your board, myself, Stephen, Abby. Diane Carey, and it has Connie on there too, but that's a seven person board or a five, a six person. Board. Hi there. Oh, okay. Lindsay, go. All right. So, um, in the last meeting, um, I think the main discussion was with the pickleball court. I think everyone was okay with the driveway change, but the pickleball court was kind of tucked in the corner and the concern was that it was too close to the neighbor. So um, we shifted it over out of the corner. Um, we did leave that space open where it's it's white 
currently because they're hoping to do a guest house in the future. So that's why we're we're trying to reserve that space. But I, I feel like where we moved it got it away from any other structure. Um, and uh, and I don't think it'll be visible, especially once we seal up that um, that driveway, the existing curb cut uh, that we're moving over to the Madigan roadside. Okay, thanks, Lindsay. Uh, board. No oh, actually, okay. This is Madigan, and this last time I checked, we're not really getting comments from them anymore. I not. did have a couple of. Oh, things go ahead. For you. Yeah, thank please. you, Mr. Chair. So, uh, appreciate the reviv revisions. I did just didn't want to mention that um, Commissioner Welch did mention last time that the character and setting was important, um, and having it within twenty feet of the main house would be more appropriate. Understanding what Lindsay just said that the owners are proposing at some point down the road to have a structure. Um, you know, maybe to be more in, inclined and, and can't hold their, their feet to the fire, but at the same time, um, I'm not too sure that the proposed location still meets that intention of what um, some of the board members were, were wanting. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Holly. Board members. Hi. Oh. Is Diane going? I I can't tell. Diane, I, are you ready? I would go. I would go if if that's okay with you. Yeah, it's fine with me. Go ahead. I I think. Um. Well, there's a lot to, that they have to contend with because the lot is so narrow. Um. Uh, I looking at the piece of land. I guess where the pickleball court is is probably the best place for it to be noise noise wise and visual wise what i don't understand and maybe somebody can tell me is why this particular uh lot application has that huge driveway coming down with Coming in at the at the bottom right, and then at the the wall there, then they have another I don't know parking space or whatever, and then it ends up at the pickleball court. It uh it sort of destroys, and then there's another entrance. To get well, in. okay, they're doing away with the back entrance. Yeah. That that's where it used to come in, Diane, and they're they're yeah. basically revegetating that part. Right. One of the owners' uh, parents are uh, handicapped, and they, their van they can't make it down the bumpy road um, right. to to access it currently. So they'd like to be able to come in through um, Madigan Road. Okay, because it it's just seems a, a lot. It would take up a lot of that very narrow because now sort of the everything goes from sideline to sideline but anyway i uh, it looks like to me this looks like the closest you can get to because there's a pool in there too so it's a busy busy lot but i guess it doesn't seem to be any other way of handling it with the uh, the amount of space they got so that's what i say Okay, Diane, thank you. Who's next? Um, Abby can go. Go ahead, Abby. Uh, uh, okay. Um, gosh, um, I'm not sure if this is the best site for a pickleball court. Um, this long, narrow sliver isn't conducive. It's making a driveway sort of a quarter of the whole length of the lot. Um, and then the pickleball court, I mean, uh, we all know why we don't want them, but why not have it right up next to your house instead of putting it all the way over there? I mean, th I, I, think, I think it's inappropriate. So I'll just stop there. The long driveway the placement of the court, 
Um, I guess that's all we're talking about. So that's uh, those are my views. Thank you. Okay, Abby, thank you. Let's see, Carrie and Stephen. I have a question. Um, there's no mention of a fence. And that has a lot to do with visibility. Um, I think blocking the existing driveway is great, but I'm not so sure you can truly block enough to hide this thing because the street is right there and you're opening up a lot of this property with a new driveway leading right to the court. So you are you have a lot of open area around it. And that concerns me um, because it is such a wild and natural um, vegetation out there. It's like a lot of scrub stuff. And when you start introducing all these you know, blocking vegetation, you're just, you're creating something that's not within, you know, the character of the setting. So I, I do think it's going to be really hard to mask this thing. So um, what is the, what is the fence height? Back to my question. Sorry. We weren't really proposing a, a tall fence i mean we would have just like a short fence on it is it it's just pickleball they're not what short yeah four feet fine short four feet okay <laughs> the ball's gonna go out into the moors yeah they're, that... they're not trying to have a really tall fence around it and and part of the reason like they're the, the idea is that like really the, the the roadway where it comes off of currently like it only feeds one other house past it. Um, and so the idea is to really just vegetate it out completely. We can even cut back the shell from going all the way to the pickleball court, if it helps, and and almost have it stop at the two car parking. And then we could just if you if the board pleases, we could just add more vegetation in that area um, well, think, of the driveway. I think because you're relying on your neighbor's sliver of land if they decide to clear their land, then you have a driveway and then the pickle court. So I would think it would be required to get rid of a big chunk of the driveway and maybe even shift it up where you have the numbers of the 81, 914 um, closer to the house. So you can buffer it even more from this, from the end where you're trying to grow some stuff to hide it. Cause that's going to take quite a while if there's already vegetation where your driveway wants to be, leave that vegetation and shift the pickle court, court up closer to where that little island of trees is so that you can use natural buffer and add to it. Um, yeah, it just, mm. that's all. Okay, Steven. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think it's an inappropriate location, and um, I won't be voting yes, even with a taller fence. Oh, okay. So um, I was actually okay with it, at, especially with a four-foot fence. But it doesn't sound like you have support for this one, uh, Lindsay, although I wasn't Can really you hold for revisions and then let me go well, back? Well, I and... think that's your best bet. I'm not sure yep. if we took it to a vote, you'd get what you wanted out of it. Yeah, uh, um, I get it. All I'll right, so for revisions. That's a Diane motion, everybody. Yes. Um, and on Diane's motion, Carrie. Aye. Abby. Aye. Stephen. Aye. Diane. Aye. And I'm in favor. All right, there you go, Lindsay. All okay, right, thank now, you. All you right. guys have. Bye bye. Uh, the illustrious Lisa Botticelli broadcasting from Oahu. Okay, Abby, oh. you're chairing this. Okay. I'll try. You want to uh, know who your board is? Yeah, I'd have... love that, Stephen, because I, I'm, I'm holding two things in my hand. Yeah, yeah. I... That's cool. It's you, Diane, Val, Carrie, and Joe. Okay, thank you. All oh, right. Hi, everybody. All right. Can so, you, Lisa, can... 90 North Liberty? Yes. Okay, thanks. Um, I was going to hopefully share my screen just because we made some further changes. 
but maybe you want to, well, I'm not sure how we want to do this. Um, Lisa, go ahead and share your uh, screen. Okay. But you have to tell us where you are. Are you in Hawaii? Yes, I'm visiting my family. That's look so nice. cool. Orange. You look so nice. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. I hear it's been crummy. Oh, oh it's where we been are. crummy. We've had like five, maybe a week of 40 mile an hour winds. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, I, I, I'm, that's why I'm inside. I'm not, I'm not going to make you guys look at um, uh, <laughs> tree outdoors. <laughs> Thank okay, you. Okay, so let me just make sure I can share this okay. I think it's going to start. Okay. Let me know if you can see this. Can you mm. see my screen? Yep. Yes. Yes. Okay. So this is the application at 90 North Liberty Street. It was um, that extremely old house. I'm sure Holly will give us more information on it. I don't have my binder with me to let you know, but it's the um, very old, significant house on the corner of Cliff Road and North Liberty Street that we put a basement under last year and he, um, our client has been um, restoring the interior of it. Uh, the goal was to add a one um, more, I don't want to even want to say modern, more updated bedroom suite into onto this building because the existing building has no updated uh, bedroom bathroom configurations. So we were proposing a before a two car garage with a studio um, or a bedroom above that. And we were in front of the board, I think maybe three weeks ago, I can't remember now. And um, there were concerns with the original application. And um, so, because it looked a little suburban. So after talking to um, some board members and uh, who I had, suggested we make we approach it as more of a barn look um and then submitting some new drawings then getting the HSAG, um oh sorry hsag comments we actually did a, a a new design which um took into account a lot of their comments which was really to change the building so from uh, a two-car garage look to more of a, a connected barn and then change the breezeway from the glass in enclosure to the detailing that would look more like a shed that could have connected these structures. Um, so that's the view from the north, which is Cliff Road. That's the east elevation, which still incorporates reusing the old workshop and a, a shed that ha will become a bathroom. And then this is the view from within the lot we added a dormer in the back to create the living space, but since it's within the lot, it's not <clears throat> visible um, from a significantly visible from a public way. And we kept the uh, French doors at the breezeway. And then the west elevation is facing a driveway um, alongside the property. And so those are the revisions. Very good, Lisa. Thank you. You're welcome for that presentation. Let's see if I can, I don't, I'm, I'm glad you have that because I, oh, here we go. I think I'm seeing a little bit more. I'm missing on mine and I don't know if other people are missing the house with the connector and then the bar, barn garage. Does everybody well, have that? Yeah. Okay. It was emailed, I, uh, Holly emailed it yesterday, I believe. Holly, is that correct? Uh, I received it late last night, so I actually received sent it to the commission this morning. This morning, I'm sorry, I'm one. I'm yeah. confused with time. <laughs> um, so just to get orient myself, um, the garage, the, the opening to the garage is now in the back, sort of facing Cliff Road. That's right. Okay. It was always and on the. It was always facing Cliff Road, but it was this before yeah. a big two car garage. Sure. Sure. Okay. All right. Well, so um, thank you for that presentation. Holly. Thank you, Madam Chair. So I think it's important to note that we're talking 90 North Liberty Street composed of the uh, 1930s Herbert Gardner garage, which is what's going to be um, basically revised and um, created as this uh, quote unquote addition onto 
the Major Josiah Coffin House, which is a circa 1724 individually significant lean to, which has been HABs documented the Historic American Building Survey. Um, and I think it's important to note not only the historic significance of this structure, the main dwelling, um, but also the who this structure is attributed to. Um, characteristically, this is facing south, um, which is a five bay facade, a massive central chimney uh, with corbelling cap. It's one of the oldest houses on Nantucket. Um, this house, um, uh, let's see, it, it was built during um, the move of town from Capom to Wesco. Um, Major Josiah Coffin was the son of Mary Gardner and Jethro Coffin. And upon uh, Jethro Coffin's death in 1726, his widow came to live with him and his family at this site. Major, jo uh, Major Coffin won his commission through service in the French and Indian War. So a significant structure and one of the oldest on Nantucket. I did also want to mention um, that contributing structures and significant alterations to contributing properties um, uh, can sever its physical connections with the past and lowering its historic integrity. And while I appreciate the reduction in scale and massing of the garage, um, as it, it, it is highly um, inappropriate to attach this onto the individually significant lean-to, which is 300 years old. Uh, the addition of the garage is not appropriate and alters this historic structure's physical connections. So I would highly recommend, I, I, while I appreciate the um, reduction in scale of the garage itself, I think it would be more appropriate to create this as a separate structure as the existing uh, garage is now, um, and that would be more appropriate for this historic site. That's my uh, comments, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Holly. Um, Mickey. Yes. Um, yeah, I think we are, uh, we're agreeing with what Holly just said, that the, the barn used to be a garage, but the barn um, has come a long way. I think it's it's pretty darn good. Um, the the notion of attaching it is the problem. I think that it would be inappropriate to attach any structure, any accessory building to the back of this very, very old historic house. Thank you. Thank you, Mickey. Okay, board members, what do you think? I'll go. Thank you, Carrie. Um, I agree. I think the barn garage cottage thing has gotten so much better, but I I am still concerned about the connection um, on the south elevation in particular. Um, on the north elevation, I mean, to be a purist, none of it would be attached. Um, but the north elevation... Um, is a little more successful, except that a window in the connector is humongous. And I think the fact that the old piece that the connector is connected to and the garage, they all, they're all quite flush. I mean, it's just like a foot here, a foot there. And I think that's a big deal that they're so, you know, so flush. Um, I just don't, um, I think separate is, better but the bre okay. but i would go for the barn right right now if we could just say separate it i think the barn looks great thank you carrie uh pa joe paul um i think the barn looks appropriate and um com it's completely in character with the house and i appreciate that you're incorporating some historic elements on the back of it um I guess if I was being a 100% purist, I would agree with my fellow board members about the link. Um, I do think that the link, given its low height, and I think if you did adjust that A window down, it really does read as a separate structure. Um, and I think it represents how a barn would be attached to a home of this era. So it, the link feels appropriate to me. Um, now those are my comments. Thank you, Joe. Um, would I have Diane and Carrie? I don't Diane and Val? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Val. Um, I agree with 
I agree with Joe. Um, and there's there's an old book that we used to reference a lot: "Big House, Little House, Back House, Barn." Do you remember mm -hmm. that? And uh, that this is what it seems like to me: how that that whole thing evolved. So I think this is really well done. Um, the front of the house faces into the lot, right? Where is yeah. the driveway? The driveway is off of Cliff Road. So the driveway comes in. If you look at the site plan here, the driveway is where it says existing driveway. That's where it's going to be. Right into the garage. Right into the garage. So we might have to change the shape of it slightly since the garage doors are moved a little bit. Um. I just realized that. I mean, I've gone by to look at it, and I just realized that the real front door faces inside. It does. So the south yeah. is really not visible from the south elevation. is really not visible if you look at the site plan, because mm -hmm. you're going to only see that from North Liberty Street. So it's really at a distance that you see. I don't think you'd ever see the breezeway from the south, from North Liberty Street. I have a question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Carrie. Um, can the front face of the connector shift back a few feet so it's not yeah. close? Uh, to the yeah, connector? I think so. If I look at the plan, I think it could probably go back a couple feet. Yeah, it's already back a, a little bit. That would help. That would help. So much. And then your roof pitch might stay the same as the other one. Oh, but it's at an angle, so it doesn't matter. Um, okay. Um. So Val, did you finish? Uh, I I think if the the south can be seen i'm not in favor of those three doors um in the connector but if it can't then i guess it's okay i like okay. this iteration with the barn look mm -hmm. oh. um did we hear okay they, diane right <clears throat> my opinion because I think it's very important not to change this and you're working with a 50 foot uh, in thing of, of wetlands. I would like to get rid of the connector. I see no reason for it. It looks like it's a connector and it doesn't look like it fits into the old old part. If this is one of our very oldest buildings, I think it's very important to keep it looking as close to it was then as instead of putting it up and the the garage is not attached at the moment. Uh, and that corner of Cliff Road and North Liberty is is very busy. Busy, busy, busy. It's the main entrance from Cliff Road down to the center of town. So I don't know. I think it's it's hard. It, it's a very attractive the way it is. I just think it's very important to keep it as close to the original as we can come up with. So that's that's all. Thank you, Diane. Um, so my my thoughts on this are that uh, I think the front of the house is very important. I, I barely even think about this house when I'm driving down Cliff Road. So if I were to have a connector with glass in it, I would put that on the cliff side and just have windows like um, nine over nine, six over sixes, but of this so that they match the old house on the south elevation in that connector. I still think the barn garage looks too modern, especially the with the dormers. And I, I might even want to see that shape, a salt box. Um, uh, once or or if you had to have dormers on the roof, I would certainly take them off the one that faces the old house. Because it's, it's, um, geez, it's just sort of making fun of the old house. And I, we're, we're trying to show this old house in its glory. Um, so, um, I, can I say a few things? Wait, did, is there a no, historic I, picture of this, 
connected think... to the pieces that are there? No, no, that's another house. But I was showing that there is, you know, precedent with this old photo. You know, there is sort of an old house. Yeah, with that's a like the thing. big house, little house thing. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the other thing that I wanted to point out, and let me get back to this, is, is when you look at the full plan from North Liberty Street, I don't think you'll see any of those elements that anybody is referring to as visible for the South from North Liberty Street. I mean, if you look at the shape of the lot. Right. Well, this is know. one of those, this is such an important house that I think, uh, I know we always talk about visibility, but this is almost like one of our little museums. So I think. Um, well, and uh, that's, and, yeah. And I think that's, you know, the, the, and he's kind of maintained that integrity with the house. And that's, you know, the goal was to, you know, try to create again, one bedroom that was usable attached to this building that has its own bathroom attached to it. The rest of the house does not do that because he really worked hard in maintaining all the historic rooms. He hasn't, you know, in expanded the kitchen. He's done nothing. He's restored every window. Um, so, you know, I think this is, uh, given the the lack of visibility on the south, um, and interestingly enough, I would have you know we did have French doors facing the north before, but it seemed like that was too modern a link facing Cliff Road, and that it was better if we were going to have any uh, glass doors, it would be into the south. But certainly, if there's concern about the visibility of of that elevation and those three French doors, I would hold for you know I would get an approval with a single a single door and then hold for uh come back when things are framed yeah so to show that that's not visible well um so uh thank you lisa for that um uh board members would you like to hold for some revisions or what is what is your pleasure i would i would make a hold for revisions. i can i ask you a question, Abby. Me? Yes. Yeah. You're the you're the chairman. You should have all these answers. <laughs> if yes, we have a Diane. building if we have a building that has a historic history that this one does, and there aren't too many left that are original both <laughs> inside because the man is doing that and outside. Are we responsible, whether looking at what the HCC is responsible for historically, to maintain this building because it is that old? And what we're you, listening to what people want to put in, it's their basic thing says, this is done, but you can't see it. But it's going on the building. So it's a question of is you can't see it as important as this is an original historic building. I don't know the answer to that part. Well, I mean, um, I would say, and if I may, that, you know, all these have uh, had additions put onto them historically for years. Um, and this one happens to still be in a very preserved state. But I, I do think that the way that we've done the addition is really sympathetic to the integrity of the original house and use actual pieces and a lot of windows that he's restored from the original structures. I mean, I, I don't, I think the, you know, I'm not sure what revisions would be what we would do other than removing the French door space in the back and making the connector a little shallower. I, I don't think there are any other revisions that can be done. Okay, no, the dormer I don't think will be visible, but because you don't you never see the house like this facing south. If I go back to the site plan, you, you don't see this building like this. Right, but but to Diane's point, this isn't just any house. This is one of our oldest houses. So um I, what were uh, you gonna say, I'd Val? I'd like to say something when you two are done. Go, go would, ahead, Val. We spent, I don't know how many years on Stone Alley going over and over what's appropriate and what's inappropriate. And I was under the impression and understanding 
that if the addition is le still leaves the original structure it untarnished for the most part that it's a successful add-on because houses do evolve um I agree with Lisa in terms of the visibility of this. I think if you guys would feel better going by there again, the driveway to this is minimal off a of cliff road. And, you know, I, if Lisa is agreeing to, you know, change that to one door and come back when it's framed to see if she wants to add the other two back. I know Carrie wanted it pushed back. Is that going to be visually significantly different from Cliff Road? Lisa, can you scroll, put the Cliff yeah, Road? Yeah, I'm not, I, I, but I don't have an issue pulling that back if Carrie wants that breezeway yeah. to be a little narrower. That's not well, a game changer. Well, the, the for facade. Me. Can I see oh, the sorry, elevation? the facade. Sorry. Yeah. Yep, absolutely, right there. So it would be um, making. I, I, I in I do think that this is something that could have evolved. Get rid of the big window. Mm -hmm. uh, That's fine. And you know you're keeping a few pieces of the 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 little shack in the back there that's already attached. So personally, I am okay with this, um, given a few minor little tweaks to it. Yeah. I, Madam I, Chair. I, yes. Uh, is that Holly? Yes, ma'am. Okay, yes, Holly, go ahead. I would like to address uh, Diane's question, if that's okay with you. Yes. So I read a little bit, just a smidget of a contributing structure within the Secretary of Interior Standards. Again, what's the basis of Na a building with Nantucket in mind. Um, another key aspect of contributing property is its historic integrity. Significant alterations to a property can sever its physical connections with the past lowering its historic integrity. This is why I highly recommend not having this addition onto the structure. I also want to point out that this particular structure is outlined within your building with Nantucket in mind design guidelines um, on page 17, um, outlining preservation, um, which is one of the four levels of um, preservation. You have preservation, restoration, <coughs> construction, rehabilitation. You all see a lot of rehabilitation and reconstruction. Um, but this structure um, is listed under the um, example of preservation. That is sustaining, maintaining, and retaining its character-defining properties. It's the most stringent and most historically accurate work that can be done on a given building or landmark. Examples of preservation around Nantucket, most notably, is the properties nominated or maintained by the Nantucket Historical Association, the Old Mill, Hadwin House, the Macy House, um, to name a few. Excellent examples of private residence on Nantucket include 8 Pine Street, 105 Main, the Ethelou Coleman House, and the Major Josiah Coffin House, this house in question. So I just want to bring it to the board's attention um, that, yes, this is a 300-year-old significant structure that's prominent within this local and national historic district and I, I again while I, I do think that the uh, plans have um, evolved and to taking your comments into consideration the issue at hand should be this connector piece having a separate structure would be more appropriate for this individually okay. significant structure uh, Thank can you, I can I say one thing just in regards to that I don't think there is any place that says that this structure has to be kept in this uh, condition and he had the right and did not significantly renovate or rehab the interior of this building uh, um, Madam so, Chair. okay Ma yes yes Stephen go ahead yeah just chair to chair I I think we I think we need to be careful here. We're kind of mixing things up a little bit. If I'd like to suggest the secretary of interior standards. Yeah. Holly is correct with respect to alterations to a historic structure. This is an addition. The, this is not a significant alteration. There's a connector piece. Um, the addition is, is not an addition is not an alteration to an historic structure. Um, the, the, the rest of the structure is completely intact. It hasn't been changed. I think that's one important point. Two, 
it seems to be there's a question of whether something is more appropriate or less appropriate, but I haven't heard an argument to suggest, and I'm not suggesting you vote on this tonight, but I just want to be clear on these points, that this is a connector is inappropriate. And in fact, the historical record represents and shows that a connector is appropriate. And I would bring to mind, uh, this is not completely different than 33 Prospect that has a connector between it and what was a garage type structure on the right of that. Um, that house has obviously gone on to be renamed to a different street address. And then lastly, I just wanted to share with you guys, I, I think if you get a chance and uh, they're open to it, go by there and go inside because the extent of the and the complexity and the degree of which the historic preservation efforts and restoration have under been undergone undertaken on the existing structure i think you would all i just want to say i think you'd all enjoy it and you should you should go take a look thank you madam chair thank you stephen um uh, i have a, a, a thought go ahead who, sorry who is that it's carrie i'd like to okay. also Yes, go ahead. Thanks. Um, I think if the connector were pushed back um, and the window reduced, it would even more minimally interfere with the existing structure, um, just physically. And physically, they have taken pains to um, preserve the building. And an addition is an addition, but it's not it, it, it might be six feet of fabric that's being um, that's being disturbed on the on the existing historic structure. That's a lot less than a lot of buildings get disturbed after being renovated. So um, I think I'm ready to say yay on this. Originally, I was thinking purist, but um, in fact, looking at what they've done to preserve and what they've done to reduce the impact of this little barn, I think it's really darn impressive when you think about it. Thanks. Okay. Thank, thank you, you, Carrie. Um, Make now, a motion, um, Carrie. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, he wants to talk first. Yeah, no, I think uh, in fairness to this old building, I mean, um, I, I'm close. But uh, um, I would actually like to see it. Um, uh, so, and I, I'm not sure. It sounds like Val's ready to go. Um, uh, does it, so, I mean, you can yeah. try a motion if you want. Um, but I think there are a few people that are sort of, um, you know, on the fence. But um, yeah. yeah. And I, I I want this to pass, you know. Um, I want everybody to be in favor of this. Um, it's it's um, it's a big one. Um, well, what what would what? Okay, if I if I just state a motion, and then can we go through the steps of seeing who's up for it? How does it work? That well, way, if an if approval it, fails, it doesn't jeopardize the application. Okay, well then I'll I'll go for it. Um, is Joe still here? Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm holding my tongue. Okay. So I would say motion to approve through staff, reducing the width of the connector by at least two feet to give a shadow line and depth to the two connecting pieces, the pieces that it's connecting. Um and uh the A window will be of the small nature to the left. Mm-hmm. On the rear, a single door, a single French door for the moment, and you can come back without prejudice to apply for three after it's framed up. Uh, okay, thank you, Carrie. Thank you for your motion. Uh, on Carrie's motion, Carrie, I'm mean, sorry. Right. <laughs> sorry, I didn't mean it. Let me start again. On Carrie's motion, Val. Aye. Uh, Joe. Aye. Diane. No. Uh, Carrie, on your motion? Aye. A and I'm going to abstain. So that passes. Thank you all very much. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Lisa. And have a nice swim in the jerk voice water for me. 
Oh, I will. I'll think of you. I'll see you guys next Tuesday. She never goes in the water. Have a good, have a what good vacation. What did you vacation. say, Ray? Did you say I what? never go in the water? That's completely no. untrue. No, I was muted. That is completely was untrue. I see you look well. great. Good to see you guys. Right. Bye. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Okay. Uh, thanks, everyone. Uh, oh, so that concludes the old business. Now we have this one piece of new business here at 27 North Liberty. Do we have anybody to represent that? Oh. oh, hi. Okay, so now was there a board established on this or did we no, just? Can I? Yes, can I please. So, of course. Uh, this I viewed for consent and I thought that it was approvable. There might be a couple of comments in different directions, but that it, given the history of the house and its historic nature and its view from the uh, Lily Pond Pass, that people might want to weigh on those particular fine tuning elements. God, so yeah. I brought it forth after a view. Okay, fair enough. Thank you, Stephen. So this will be the regular board. And um, you want to just give us a quick overview? Uh, Looks like just, you're just changing out one door. Is that correct? Sure. Uh, briefly. I mean, at this point, almost every aspect of the historic character of the original house has been retained or restored. And uh, a huge effort has been made to maintain its historic integrity. Um, the only thing that is not <laughs> historic is this rear sliding yeah. door um, that is existing. And the, the board had approved a 15 light uh, double uh, door with a, trans, a lower trans, a lower panel and um i'm requesting that be reconsidered for a uh a tri again a triple door since this is the major view of the lily pond um uh the uh cost was prohibitive for the 15 light door in in uh in terms of the budget to um maintain that uh to apply that and I've I've come across these salvage doors that I'd like to uh, propose to have installed. There is precedent in when I'm on my deck, I see the uh, a triple glazed door just across the lily pond, and um, this is just not visible even in winter from even the walkways of lily pond. There is no public visibility to this. Okay. I can attest to that. All right, well, good, because you're on this. So before we get to you, though, Abby, you've completed, right? Finished? Yeah. Finished? Okay, so we're going to hear from Holly. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So for the record, this is individually significant, uh, circa 1798 Seth Ray Cooper shop. You recently approved um, great restoration project from Michelle on this, and you also approved um, a historic determination um, for this structure, um, actually in last year, 2023. Um, what is proposed, um, I don't believe is appropriate. Um, everything has been done historically accurate in, in, in increasing an already out of character feature like the double French doors, understanding that the existing um, was something that was done in the modern times. Um, the six light triple is not historically sensitive. Any type we have um, is what you all approved, which was approved through staff for the 15 light kick panel. Um, I understand the intent and, and appreciate having, um, you know, uh, material that is salvaged. Obviously, we greatly appreciate that. Um, but again, the board approved um, these sensitive changes with the rear with the, with the triple door as opposed to now to two with 15 light with the picket panels and that's more appropriately and uh, uh, might I add um, consistent with what you all approve for French French doors within the OHD and especially for a, a historic structure. So those are my comments. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Holly, thank you. Mickey? Yes, we um, we fully agree with everything that Holly just said. The um, original approval is much more appropriate for a building of this age and style. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Regular board, who would like to begin? I have a question. Yes. Um, 
if you were not to get this, we don't deal with money. So we don't deal with budgets and things. But uh, since you've said that, would you, given your constraints, leave, can we go back to the image, please? Can you zoom in on that center set of images? Yeah, just a little click in. Would you be leaving those in place? I would probably. Because I would think that the net benefit would be the triple oh, those reuse. Oh, the ones on the bottom that are there. Well, that is, those That's are what six, exist. Six, yeah, six. right. Yeah. I, I would budget-wise have to leave that as existing. That would be a concern for me. It's a slider. Yeah. Are the, are the triples sliders? No. No, it would be one fixed and uh, a, a pair. Okay. Um, I just want to, uh, that was a question, a comment. I do appreciate, I've been in the house. The work that's being done uh, is akin to the structure we just talked about on the corner of North Liberty and Cliff. It's terribly important. It's um, a labor of love, I get it. And uh, I, I think we would all, anyone else who'd been in there would say we very much appreciate the work you're doing. Thanks. Okay. Um, anyone else? Regular board. Well, what's that? What's that a picture of? What? Across the way. Oh, across I see. I see across the way. Yeah. Well, uh, I could go. Um, yeah, go ahead. Just I'm I'm just musing because um, because Stephen brought up the fact that if we didn't, that we would be left with that. So of the lesser two evils, I think is the newly proposed. Um, I just wish it it related to that one little window in the last little massing there a little bit more. It looks a little juxta uh, positioned, whatever that term is. If if does anybody see what I mean? I mean the 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 new six light French doors don't go with the small six over six. So um, that's what I'm mulling over. But it certainly is better than the two sliders. So those are my thoughts. Okay, Abby, thank you. Let's see, we have Diane, Val. How about if it's just a double? They're, they're doors that come as a, did I understand I, these are I, reused doors? It's a um, complete. I could do a double on oh, okay. those doors. Then it's yeah. really. Yeah. I, I thought it came as a, she was getting it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A, I could have that all. A yeah. complete. I could all that. Unit. Okay. Uh, Val, thank you. Diane. Could I see a site plan or something other than the lily pond? I want to see how it's, if it's a house, I think it is. Hey, yeah. Um, Diane, this is the one right past the parking lot. As you're going out of town, it's the one that you see first once you've passed the Lily Pond parking lot that's on North Liberty Street. Right. That's the, old, the yes. old building that we spent so much time yes. doing. Yes, exactly. Painting. Yes. Yeah, that's right. what I thought it was. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, but I, I, uh, I believe I am probably in favor of what Holly said and fit that in. I, I, I don't know. I don't see there's a maple tree beside this. I don't see how that fits in. Are they going to cut it down? Do they want to cut it down? Um, this is again one of our oldest buildings, so I I want to see what other people say because okay. it's the only way I can make a choice. Thank you. Well, the only other person you're going to hear from is me. 
Yeah. Well, let's hear what you Steve, have to Steven, say. Stephen spoken, <laughs> Val has spoken, Abby spoken. And so given lack of visibility and what we can call, we'll borrow the term from CONCOM net benefit to the sliding doors, I'm actually okay with as proposed. Okay. But that's just me. Because um, Val has suggested doing two rather than three. So I'm, I'm ready for a motion from anybody that would want to give it a try. I would say motion to approve um, eliminating one door um, as submitted. Okay. Give that a try. Exhibit so a. Um, an exhibit A. Yeah. Which and would simply be to cross out that third door. Centered on the wall. Um, would you be using this centered on the wall? I, I know that's centered. Uh, okay. Yeah. All Just right. To check. Yeah. Um, all right. So that is Val's motion to go from three panels to two panels on that motion. Abby. I'm an I. Uh, Stephen. I am an I. I am. I guess I'm an I. Okay. I Val, thank you. I. And I'm in favor. So motion carries. Here you go. Thank you. You're thank welcome. You. Um, all right. Now, Joe has, Joe Topham, that is, has a bunch of, uh, well, all additions, alterations, historic determinations, et cetera, et cetera. Come on up, Joe. Are we on 4R Jefferson? Um, yeah, I think so, yes. Okay, thanks. Garage first. Garage addition alteration is what I have down first. Good evening, Mr. Topham. Good, Good meeting. Mr. Welch, Good how are you, sir? Doing well. Good to see you. It's better to be back on this side of the fence. <laughs> <laughs> bit, bit of a shooting gallery last yeah. night. Bob and Weed. Ah, so did I. <laughs> okay, Joe, hit it on okay. the garage. Uh, Joseph Topham for the applicant. I'm going to kind of take these all together, if you don't mind. Yeah, just that's a good idea. So this is for uh, Jefferson, which... Uh, was four structures in 1940, 1971, and 1993 um, NHA aerials. The property is shown as two maps on the earlier available Sandwar maps area from 1923 maps, map number 19 and number 21. Both show four structures on the property and the property is the same uh, site and s cited as now. The property shown on the two maps, again in 1949, map 19 and 1920. Um, and the structures seem to exist there at the same time and at that time. Um, the property has been known as 70 North B Street, 70 Jefferson Avenue, and 4 Jefferson Avenue before it was subdivided and created as 4R Jefferson Ave. Um, and this was all a family owned um, property and got subdivided for each family member. So uh, the HABs survey that Holly uh, helped share. Um, after extensive research, we really didn't find a lot on this property, believe it or not, which was kind of wild. Uh, but the HAB survey for the garage determined it as unknown. It has no information of when it was built, and that will be converted into the main house going forward. Um, the HAB survey of the cottage says it was built in 1923 as a shed. It determined that it plays a contributing role. Uh, we're not going to do anything major to that. I just want to do a bathroom addition and then, of course, elevate that to uh, meet code. Um, the only materials we could find in the, uh, are two photos from Flint Ranney's collection of real estate photography, photographs, sorry, and available from the NHA, other uh, photos resource online. And then we included Worcester Polytechs managing floods. And the reason I did that is just so you can see on this northeast elevation, um, we're going to take the existing garage that is in the setback and move it, if you're looking at that plan, to the left out of the setback. And then you can see the dash line. The intent is not to save as much as the existing garage, rafters, et cetera, and then build over that. So if there is a comment about the height, it is 
literally to build over that existing garage structure and retain as much as we can. That's kind of our intent. And then to the left in the background, uh, you can see the existing cottage. Uh, that is a, a structure or dwelling now. Um, would like to put in a, a would like to attach a bathroom addition and not uh, touch any of the existing historic structure on the interior. So that's our hope. I do have a little bit of more work on that as far as concom and et cetera. So that is the plan as a whole. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So first, um, and I apologize, I didn't really get to have a conversation with you, Joe, because I was really concerned and confused on why we had historic determinations, but I appreciate your office providing much information. And I think um, if we're reviewing these as a, as a whole, and I think that would probably be the best approach. Um, one, these are all in the AE flood zone, AE8 flood zone. So we need the elevation certificates and these structures being contributing can be um, not have to meet the substantial compliance section of the building code, which is great for all our resilient and target design guidelines. Hence, for any of those, um, those um, exemptions, if you will, are allowed to <coughs> with the historic determination. So they kind of, I wanted the commission to kind of review all of these together. Right off the, the gate, um, I think what's being proposed for the garage um, and, and putting the, um, elevating it for having a uh, livable space above, um, I don't, it's, it's a really hard to see whether or not it's, it retains its, its historic integrity, if you will. Um, but I do appreciate what you're, you're showing. I think it's, it's more for the other structure, you're literally, you're literally lifting it and, and, and you're not doing the full required eight feet, which is great. I, I, basically with that said, um, and based on the historic information, 1920s um, structure, uh, I think historic determination would be fine. I support that. Um, so I'm just kind of putting these all together and right. why, and why, Mr. Chair, why they weren't on the um, consent agenda. Um, two, it's just being elevated. It's not being the full eight feet. You're, we're, we're actually doing um, less than four, which is what your design guidelines recommend for a contributing structure. I'm having a hard time with the garage um maybe because it's a lot higher on elevation um how it relates to the reconfiguration of the cottage um and how much of the um structure itself is being retained and maybe i'm just losing it in your your drawings but i do appreciate the intent of wanting to be able to um not have to build to the full eight feet as fema requires and um, being able to retain as much as the existing character because these are important. As a matter of fact, I think there's a lot of people that think that these structures in this area of, of Brant Point are non-existent um, and that they're all new. So I applaud the owners and I applaud you, Joe, for um, trying to utilize our design guidelines for what they are. So that way we're not having to have these larger structures. Um, I say that to say any of the fenestration um, you, you know, I would think anytime you can have a kick panel, that would be greatly appreciated. That would be consistent with what we see, especially in Brant Point. Um, and um, both applications would require, actually not both, um, you're, you're actually taking your a livable space and putting it above the garage. So you wouldn't need, you're not having any livable space on the first floor for the garage, turning it into a cottage, right? Oh, there's a Just, kitchen. Yeah, so, and that kind of leads back into this, sorry to interrupt you, but no, so, if you on the on that elevate or on that sorry floor plan we're using posts within the existing structure to raise it up but on the back section that would be raised up a foot and then the existing footprint we uh retained but and the existing walls reuse as much as possible of course the roof will come off but the what i want to do is raise that up only a, a foot above the worst uh flooding in this area so I'm not going to go up even to the, you know, like the eight foot, I, I want to stay around six and a half. So it's one foot above the worst, which is I think was like five and there was a foot of water in the Beachside Motel. So that is why I shared the WPA information or WPI information. So that's why this little area, I would love to lift it more and get it out of that area. But this is where I need to really kind of hold it down on the ground and then build over the existing garage structure and just support wherever I can if I need some extra new studs or whatever and I'll, 
Alpine and historic studs or old studs. Thank you, Joe. Mr. Mr. Chair, through you to Joe, if if um, as far as this structure that we're seeing right before you for the um, garage converting into a cottage, um, I guess when we want to see the elevation certificate, um, would love to see very clearly the difference between the existing structure and the proposed so I can actually make sure that it meets the substantial compliance, you know, as far as um, what you're increasing it. Because at the end of the day, we need to make sure that it's still the same structure. And so on, it's just, just getting the survey to get me that information, but I'm trying to get in front of you all to say, like, are, you, are we fine? And then I will circle back with that information awesome. to your office. And um, eliminate any of the um, uh, shingle space between the very character defining funky uh, window and the second floor. And those are my comments for the cottage. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. Uh, Mickey. Right. So the regarding the garage, um, we don't really have any concerns with that. I think that's, that's he's keeping some important features and <clears throat> disturbing as little, I guess, as possible. Um, and it's, it's low, it's pretty removed from the street, not very visible. Um, regarding the smaller cottage, the only comment we had about that was the um, skirt boards. They're shown with horizontal skirt boards as it's being raised up. Um, and horizontal skirt boards really are not terribly historic. I think those would normally be vertical. And so we would suggest that they be changed to vertical. And then the photographs reveal a rather noticeable sag in the ridge and we would hope that you're not even going to try to attempt to, to repair that, leave it as it is. So um, that's it. Thank you. Mickey, thank you. So regular board, who would like to begin? Um, I have a general question. Um, I'm trying to comprehend the all the buildings on the site, and I'm just wondering, I'd love to go down and really sort of feel, get a feel for this site. Um, and uh, then I could make uh, better uh, opinions about, um, you know, uh, all that's going to go on here. Um, so my, my, my thought would be for a view. Okay. Uh, Stephen, you were about to say something. Yeah, I just want to get a clarification. Uh, Joe, I'm looking at, what, which terms are I looking at? Sorry, we're sharing up. Um, can we? Well, this is the one we're on, right? That's that's the cottage. Oh, I thought we were on the garage. Sorry. Can we go to the garage? Yeah, this one. Okay. Garage is structure, darker line on the upper set drawing, yep. and uh, two stories now on the lower. Story and a half. Yeah. Okay. I was very confused because it indicates proposed main house, but this is to be the garage. It's a garage now, and now that garage structure above the garage structure is going to be the main Become the proposed structure. main house. Yes. Okay. I, I guess what I keyed off of existing main house above, and you're talking about the cottage, and then down here you're saying the main house is what is the garage being converted. Uh, correct. Yeah, is there a picture uh, of the main house? Well, let, let, please, I don't want to, this is a little confusing. I want to stick to my question to not think it's more confused. So, Joe? Yeah, I'm working. No, just wait one sec. Don't. In the upper drawing, oh yeah, the main house is the is, cottage. Yeah, it's going to be no. In that elevation is the no. garage that is forefront and darker. That is yeah yeah no. That, I'm ta I'm talking about in the upper drawing. Yeah, it says existing main house, and that is the structure with the taller structure i should have labeled that and then this garage. one down here i okay so that was where the confusion Correct. was yeah, is sorry. i was thinking sorry. yeah this I was changed. Exactly. okay yeah, so that makes sorry. a that clarifies the question i had my thank bad. you um okay that was my question um did, so does anybody want to come okay how does this compare i know it's back further to yes. the height of the house to the front house and the yeah. 
I think the existing main house is 26 feet, if I remember reading the drawings correctly. And then there's another little cottage in between the main house and this is way in the back. Way in the back. This is way off the road. This, this, it's been subdivided into three separate lots. Uh -huh. Each family kid got a, their own lot. Okay. Um, uh, Mr. Chair? Yes, Abby. Um, I was just going to say if this does go for a view, would we be able to walk up that way and, and sort of see all these buildings or is that uh, not uh, is it that too is it private i'll do that only for approval now um <laughs> yeah <laughs> i abby i can uh, reach out to my client and you and i could meet on site if that works for you if if everyone wants to do that yeah let's see if everybody's um interested in in seeing all these as a whole i think it's that's it's it seems like a really neat project um so i I, but I'd like to go down there and feel it. Let's see. So I kind of have heard questions from most of you, but I would like to hear comments of any kind. Um, I'm inclined to comment, but I don't think I need a view. But if we're going to do a view, I'm inclined to think we should hold comments till we do the view. All right. Well, are you good with that? It's up to you guys. We want to have a view. I mean, are you good with that? If we... If you want to go for a view, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I I am only going to say that I, <clears throat> uh, given what Holly and Mickey said about this project, and now that I fully understand, because the labeling was a you know for yeah, me no, like it. many people an issue: main house, guest house, garage, cottage, you know this that. Um, I think that the architecture of this is is very charming, and the fact that you're retaining it is is <clears throat> terrific so yeah anyway does it sound does that everybody want to view it is that where we are i'm okay uh, without a view i, but I if, haven't heard from want diane view, either is, is diane diane you there does someone want to bring up like a gs map and then from the street view i so am what? here and i would go and see it but i want to get to you as a location because I have not seen a sort of reasonable site plan. Is this down on Jefferson Avenue on the right hand side before you get to this to before the building the that was with the uh, sand? Here we are, Diane. This yes. is the street this is the street view. So disregard oh, okay. the house on the right hand side. Right. And look at Oops. that, the, exactly where the pointer is. That Those are the buildings in question. They're at the okay. back of that lot. Yeah, I, very good. All I, right, I, I just wanted to see floor. where it was. I don't want to comment. Yeah, I think we should just comment. All right, so Stephen's going to comment. I'll get uh, right back to you, Diane. I, I think um, I understand and appreciate the idea of you um, these are the structures I thought they might be, and I'm okay commenting and even acting this evening. Um, on the garage, that structure, the modifications there, I think there's some room for tinkering, but I don't believe it's necessary given its location and the lack of visibility. And the um, cottage structure, um, obviously, as Ali mentioned, we need the appropriate paperwork, the format. Um, indicating the design flood elevation and i appreciate there aren't uh, modifications to that significant modifications to that historic structure being proposed so that's the cottage and the garage that i've commented on what was the other one uh historic the determinations, determinations. Both. Both. so those uh those i can get my head wrapped around um Basically, those allow him not to have to raise the buildings the whole way. The whole way, yeah, which is a benefit to us. That area. Yeah. yeah. So those are my comments. Thanks, Mr. Chair. All right. Thank you. Val, anything? No, I know where this is. I've been down here, um, given where it is, uh, and, and that you're keeping some of the garage. I, I'm happy you're keeping two of the buildings. So it's all good. 
Okay. Thank you. Um, Diane? Yep. I'm for a view. Okay. And Abby, you're for a view. Yes, please. And I'm going to reiterate what I said before, which is that I think that this these are very um, well-designed um, enhancements to existing uh, fabric. Uh, I think taking advantage of the um, of the uh, historic determination is good. And the only thing that I would say is to Mickey's point about the horizontal boarding, even though it's not going to be visible from Jefferson or whatever we call the street in front of this at that point. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'll look for a motion on this. I've got a question. Yeah. Uh, uh, Joe, that are you doing any structural work on the cottage? Other Is it a reno or just a lift? It's a lift and then add that bathroom addition because I don't want to renovate it. Okay. So that. But the roof structure, is uh, it going to That sexy little curve, I love that. I want okay. to keep that. So oh. I'm, I'm going to make oh, a, mo that, yeah. a group motion. Um, one will be an exhibit A. Well, it'll be an exhibit A on the cottage, and okay. that'll be to uh, change the uh, skirting to vertical board. Okay. Um, and retain the, uh, a note to retain the sag. Can I, can I make one friendly amendment to that? Yep. I, I will gladly meet Abby and Diane on site. And if they have an issue, I'll come back and reopen the application if they have some concern. Yeah, I think that's a wonderful gesture and an important one. Um, All right. And so basically it would be to approve the garage you submitted, uh, the historic determinations uh, to be approved and written, and the cottage to have the vertical board. And the saggy roof. Well, he says he's not, he, he hasn't proposed changing that. So, and True. the firmat. And True. the certificate. And um, could I interrupt before we take a vote? Because I wanted to ask one question because I might be able to vote as okay. well on this tonight. Um, there are a couple of details. There are some shutters, and I was just wondering what color those are proposed for. And it looks like the trim is white everywhere. Is, yeah, well, I'm not changing any colors. I'm going to match what's existing. So, so uh, are the, do you know what color the shutters are? It's like a robin's egg blue. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's what I thought. Okay. It says All right. Robin's egg blue. Yep. Okay. Um, all right. So I believe that was officially Stephen's motion. And that motion is really for all four applications. Um, on that motion, Val. Aye. Abby. I'm an aye. Diane. Diane, keep in mind, is she muted? She's gone. Oh, she's gone. Okay. Uh, all right. So scratch Diane. Uh, Stephen, on your motion. Can I get the stamp? Aye. Stephen said aye. And I'm in favor too. Okay. So there's that. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night. Thank you. Night, night. Okay. Uh, we have 10 minutes. We, is anyone here for three fifth way offense? No, Actually, what, what are you here for, sir? 51 West Mile Common. What? Oh, Tommy. Oh, wait down. Yeah, I totally forgot you were back there. I told him he said he was okay. Okay, because uh, let's see. Besides, I bet you've been immensely entertained tonight. We're better than watching Seinfeld reruns. Um, okay. Now, is who's in the queue? Is there anybody in the queue? Because n now I'm just going to go for like who's here. We, All right. I thought Five Fifth Way could be concerned. Mr. Chair, we have four applicants in the queue. We have Uri, we have uh, Tori, uh, and I'm not too sure what um, Kevin Davidson and Ainsley Wilson are here for, but those are the four people in the queue. Hey. All right. Well, so who was the first person in the list? Uh, three fifth way, not here. Act smart, not here. Uh, Steve Rothke, not here. Melinda Pulik, Pojek, no. Who is here? And Lisa's gone too. 
She's swimming. Oh, I know. And this openness now is going to be, I'm just yeah, 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 concerned. Yeah, yeah. No, we're, are we going to open it now? I, well, I don't know. That's kind of where we are. So it's up to you. Unless we do All right. So now. what? You want, you guys would just want to call it, call it quits. Do we have minutes to review or approve? Yeah, let's call it quits. All right. Yeah. Let, let, well, um, wait. We got minutes, minutes to review and vote on, or no. just, just to review. Yeah. All right. Okay. So we're gonna call it quits. That's what we're gonna do tonight. Call it quits. Um. Quit. All right. So uh, could somebody? Do you mind if I just take off? Because the dogs are going nuts. You get okay. So, but do, up, Diane, uh, Abby. We're gonna. We're going to adjourn, and yeah, we're waiting. Okay. We're waiting on a motion from John McLaughlin. Of night, course. night. Oh, make, I must so motion. I oh, so motion. John, thank you. Quits. Hang on, don't, 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 don't. John has made a motion to call it quits on John's motion. Val, aye. Stephen, aye. Um, Abby, woof, woof. Yes, aye. Okay, great. And John, on your motion, aye.